Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. I may have to <laughs> run over there and say hi to my husband real fast because he just got home. I put his dinner on his plate because he's running late. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to see here. I know <clears throat> we're going to be going, we're going to be doing our study. Let me, I hope. Yes, I'm quite certain. Hi, Marie. Shalom, shalom. Um, let me I'm gonna take you with me on a little journey. We're just going to wait for a few people to pop on here. We're going to be going through the book of Acts tonight. Um, one second here. Hey, babe, I put your dinner on right on your plate, honey. I just said it there. I love you. See you when we're done with the study or you can come down. <laughs> okay, shalom, shalom, everyone. Sorry. Jim just got home, so I had to tell him. I just stuck. We had tacos because it's Taco Tuesday, correct? <laughs> so I had to do tacos. Shalom, 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 shalom. Um, hi, baby Trey. We had tacos tonight. I just put your daddy's taco on the thing. There's my son, everyone. Isn't he cute, Trey? <laughs> okay, we're gonna be going through the book of Acts tonight. Hey, mom. I'm glad you remembered I'm your mom. <laughs> You need to come see your mama more. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to be going through the book of Acts tonight. I'm drinking my little Waterloo after I just shoved taco food down my face. <laughs> so fast. Hi, Jenny. Shalom, shalom. I'm going to wait a few minutes, five minutes. We're going to go till 635, and then we're going to start. If you have questions for the book of Acts that you can think of, get them, start preparing yourself. It's great to have questions. Um, I pray you all had a blessed day. I pray you all an amazing day. I know some of you need some prayer. A few of you have reached out, and we're going to do unspoken prayer requests unless they bring them up on here. Hi, Rachel. Shalom, shalom. Hey, Wyoming got up to 18 degrees today. It was funny. I was doing chores, and I was like, oh, my gosh, my eyelashes aren't freezing shut because every other day this week, my eyelashes when I'm out there <laughs> feeding the cows and milk. Um, I didn't milk the cows. Um, watering everything my eyelashes were <laughs> frozen shut and so i was like I, I kept trying to like open my eyes and then today I, I was like oh my gosh well this morning i did the chores in the dark in the middle like of the morning early early then it was still freezing and then at noon though the noontime chores i came in and i was so shocked it was 18 degrees <laughs> i was like wow where do you get your meat i raise it <laughs> i butcher it by myself um, now, shalom, shalom, Christina. Um, I, so I butcher all the chickens. We have butchered our own beef, but usually what I do is I have the meat locker here. Come and get my cow. He shoots a cow right here, takes the cow with him, butchers it for me. So, um, first day of the news. Oh, awesome, Kimberly. Shalom, shalom. My nose hair is freezing. <laughs> my husband's a general, well, we're general contractors. I haven't done it with him for the last few years because my son took over that. But yeah. We know what those snot sickles are like, don't we? What time do you start in the morning? So I like to get up between three and four. Sometimes earlier today was two. I got up at two. But then I was like, Father God, can I go back to sleep for a little bit? <laughs> this is going to be a long day. <laughs> so I went back to sleep for a little bit. Um, but I start, yeah, pretty early. Hi, baby. Wow. <laughs> Don't point it at me. Do your husband's like come home with random guns? <laughs> You're just like, what? How many guns? Yes. Oh, yeah, let's pray. We'll pray for, hi, Anthony. Shalom, shalom. We're going to wait till just a few more minutes. Let people get on. I'm going to start lifting some of you up in prayer. Father God, I'm going to lift, um, we're going to lift Donna. We're going to lift Charlene. We're going to lift Danielle up for certain. I also know to lift um, Selena up. Um, yeah, but you know the needs of your people. We bless your holy name and we thank you, Father. We thank you. We love you. We adore you. You are so beautiful. We thank you that you are the God of mercy, grace, healing, forgiveness. That also, though, we know you're the God who afflicts to teach us. And we're, you, we know that you have us in your hands. So, so through everything, the good, the bad, the teaching, the lessons, the, the strengthening, whatever it is, Father God, we beg you to be with us right now. We ask for healing, healing in Donna. Yahweh, I'm not exactly certain what a biopsy is, but Father God, would you just please heal her completely 
show her the root of it so she can repent if there's anything you're trying to teach her. But Father, if it's simply her strengthening and to grow her faith in you, Yahweh, will you meet her where she's at and grow that faith that she could throw down that mountain into the sea. Father, you are so good. We bless your holy name. We pray for understanding of your people. We pray, Lord, that you would help us endure these afflictions and the trials as everyone is waking up to you over the last 30 years. And particularly now, there's a lot of these people coming at the last minute. And thank you, Father, for bringing them. Thank you that they will get the same reward and help them to run the race with endurance, the, what, even if it's a small, short time before you come, even if it's... Whatever it is, Father God, bless them, keep them, protect them, give them the perfect heart of you, fill them with your Holy Spirit, help them to understand fully and comprehend your ways, Yahweh, and be merciful to them. Protect your sheep, Father God, protect them from the wolves and the lies and deceits, and please grant us understanding and wisdom according to your truth and your truth alone, Father God. May we never believe the lies of man. May we not get sucked down the tunnels and rabbit trails of, of weird philosophies and theologies and and, and conspiracy theories that father god don't matter but may we seek justice and mercy love hope faithfulness peace may we seek righteousness that we would obey you oh father god you are so good oh yavi elohim we adore you i pray that you would be merciful on your people and grant them repentance unto salvation i'm going to see if there's any other prayer requests um Yes, okay, Father God, please, please, please heal Kathy. Please help her and Mike as they're going through this whole situation. Father God, surround them with your mighty angels. Please, Father, heal her. Right now, heal her. Show her again, show her the root of it if there's anything. Help her sustain her. Father God, I pray for the marriages right now that are struggling for Nate and Holly as you're bringing restoration to their marriage and, and the other Nate, Father God, that you would heal and save his family. Turn his wife's heart to you and your ways. Any marriage in need uh, that is satan is just t tearing them apart father god please bring them back to you please 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 father save your children do not let satan win um ooh, any other prayer requests i missed yes okay so that i think i got them um first day of the new school help help guide kimberly with all of that okay okay guys well, and with that, we're going to ask Father Yahweh Elohim, please come and teach us tonight, Lord. Please don't let any word proceed out of my mouth or any thoughts out of our head that are not of you, Father God. Please just come and set guard over this for your glory, for your name's sake, to set your people free. Oh, we bless your holy name, Yahweh. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay, guys. Um, I really want... Um, oh, bedridden. Oh, 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 goodness, sweetie. I'm so sorry. Father God, please help Marie. Please, please, please strengthen her. Again, show her the root of anything, but sustain her, hold her, help her. Please, Father, for your glory, in the name of Yeshua, we ask. Um, shalom, everyone. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I was praying for you a lot, Christina. So if anybody doesn't know, Christina and a few others on here, Christina, Romaine, who's RJ on here, and um, Selena, so they're like way up way up by the North Pole. <laughs> They're way up where it's really cold. Not really. They're in Canada. Um, for my children to turn to, yes, Father God, I pray for Rachel's children. Please bring all their hearts to you. Please save all of our children like their hearts on fire for you in the name of Yeshua, we ask. Um, okay, and, and, okay. Hello, Anna. Hello, Joe. Hello, everyone. Um, please, Father God, heal everyone. I know Anna's children, her little child, her children, please sustain her and help her through that. Um, and and um, Charlene, the other day, she was having, no, did I say the wrong name? The, who was having the baby the other day? Um, ooh, I just, I, I'm seeing the picture, but I'm forgetting the name. So sorry, guys. Um, please, Father, help with that, everything with that baby. Okay. Oh, okay, Joe. No, pre, no problem. Sorry about that, buddy. Um, okay. So, first of all, let's just go through kind of quickly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I forgot to turn off my notifications. Let me do that. Really sad because we as believers can see that the new testament validates torah but so many people have so many lies and what's happening is a lot of you have been coming to me with questions and like hey but what, what do i say when they say this what do i say when they say that and that's like if you go back and i'm sorry i'm burping from the waterloo <laughs> um if you go back and look through some of the videos we've done i did specific videos on the book of romans i have a podcast through galatians i'm trying to give you guys the equipment so you understand what paul was saying shall we or Paul, I am so sorry for the burps from the Waterloo. 
However, here's a Waterloo plug. If you want something with no sugar that's really good and bubbly, here you go. Um, plus, I scarfed my food so fast. That's probably why. <laughs> anyway, I want to equip you guys so that you have the tools and understanding of Shaul's words when they come to you because people twist them to their own destruction. And that's what Peter warns in 2 Peter chapter 3. He says, unlearned and unstable men twist Paul's words to their own destruction. Um, did I tell you my sister passed? You did, sweetie. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so sad. My sister, she went in to get a sore. I saw on your page, and I remember like reaching out in condolences or something on your post. I didn't know what had happened. See, like doctors just kill you. Stay away from them. Stay away from them. Um, okay, guys, so I'm new here. I'm really appreciating, appreciate. Okay, awesome, Michaela. We love you. We're here for you. I don't take money. I've taught for 22 years. My husband um, used to be a big time pastor in a, a big church, and he got convicted and left and became an atheist because he said the church isn't teaching. The, the Bible, and then I came to the full obedience of Torah. My family was Jewish, but we were Christian Jews, and so we I didn't know Judaism. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Um, I didn't even know what it meant. I didn't even know that Saturday was, was the Sabbath, Friday sunset and stuff, and so when the Father had me do a 13-day fast in 2002, it put it all together, and it ended on a Friday night at sunset, and he said, 13 days, no food, and then he told me Friday night at sunset. Like her, He told me it would end, and I'm like, what in the world is Friday night at sunset? <laughs> anyway, so we came out of that and we don't do religion. We don't do organization. We don't build our own kingdoms. That was a really jumbled mess there. We don't build our own kingdoms. We simply work for the glory of God. So we're here for you. We wash your feet. We don't take money. We don't build named groups. We're just here to let you on fire so you can get your community, your family, their, like the truth of God there and, and set that place on wildfire for God, right? We want everybody to be servants of each other and help each other. So tonight we're going through the book of Okay, um, man, thank you. She's, okay, um, awesome. Um, but can't do it yet. I been really where to go. So honestly, Donna, you're probably in the wilderness right now. We've talked a lot about that. Um, if you start, start watching the videos from the past, you'll see that you're in a wilderness experience, and God wants to be everything for you. He doesn't want you to rely on anybody but him. And he'll give you teachers. The book of Isaiah says he'll send you teachers who are behind you whispering in your ear, this is the way. They're not on a pulpit, but we will help you. We're not gonna be taking money from you. We're not robbing you. We're not building our own kingdoms. We're literally pushing you closer to God, your true teachers. So remember that. Um, we're literally here whispering in your ear, saying this is the way and I'll walk in it. And that's what the Bible says would happen. Um, and, and you're going to be in this wilderness experience like Ezekiel 20 says he's going to take you with them into that wilderness and he wants you to pass under the rod. And, and then the book of Zechariah, it says like this family will be by themselves and this family will be by themselves. It's because he really needs to get us away from our strongholds and the people who could influence so we, so we understand him and his truth. And that's why it's so critical to go back to the beginning and read Genesis to the end um, because then nobody can... If I can convince you of something based on just a few weird, ill-placed scriptures, so then somebody can unconvince you. What you need to know is the whole word of God for yourself. So from the beginning to the end, you know how it all goes together. That's why nobody's ever stumped me. I've never had a debate I've lost because <laughs> I know the whole Bible. So somebody doesn't come to me and like, oh, this says here, you don't have to obey the law. I'm like, actually, that's not what it's saying. And let's look at these previous verses. That, let's bring up the context of what it is. So once you know the whole Bible, nobody can trip you up from this because you can't ever then believe in a lawless God again, right? You just can't once you see Torah. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to go through the book of Acts. And I have, like I said, there's lots of teachings on there. I did buy a little light thing today and I'm trying to get it ready so I can do the YouTube videos. But as all of you know, I have a full-time farm and full-time photography business and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I want to make sure... Okay, so Father God, please help Kimberly with her anxiety. Um, well, I wish, I would hope Joe could stay, but okay. So what we're going to do, guys, is, okay, I'm just going to make sure I didn't miss any preface questions, and then we're going to, devil's at your door, you can, oop, what did Jenny say to Michaela? Okay, I, um, okay. Sometimes I get lost in these. <laughs> okay, um, I'm definitely in the wilderness right now. Yep, you're going to be, sweetie. Um, awesome. 
did not go well, right? Because when you build a kingdom and your job is based on the lies you've constructed, of course it doesn't go well. You know why you could come to me with the truth? And I'll be like, oh, like, cause somebody the other day was talking about kidneys and I'm like, I honestly don't remember if we can eat kidneys or not. And then he, then I saw the verse where it says the kidney of the sacrifice animal ought to eat. And so I told him, I said, awesome. Cause I honestly don't take note of that. Cause you couldn't pay me. I grew up on a farm. You can't pay me to eat another liver or another organ meat ever again. It's so disgusting. And my grandma, oh, ugh. like I can't do that. So it doesn't even, it didn't affect me and I didn't think about it. And so then it was good for me to look at it. But the reason you can come to me with, if there's a truth and I'll say it's truth is because I have no system that I've built based on money. <laughs> I just want the truth. But the people who are pastors, they made a profession out of teaching, uh, teaching the word of God. They made a profession and that's like, they literally have their livelihood on that. Paul was a tent maker right? If they got sent out, they got helped. The, the Levites, the widows and the orphans, there was, there was food for them there. That's why the tithes were brought to the temples. Cause when you had your temple service duty, that was, you had to leave your land. Otherwise you were given land and you were to work that land in the place. And like, yeah, you guys get what I'm saying. Anyway, and the Micah says, don't preach for pay or prophesy for profit. So, um, Micah chapter three. So, um, anyway, yeah, it's, it's weird because we, we feel these people are, are good. We feel that they're right, but they're wolves in sheep's clothing. They're the bad shepherds that are going to be judged. They're the bad shepherds that are leading the truth. And so I really pray that your husband can get allegiance away from that and to God. Because like the Bible says to King um, Hezekiah, or no, Jehoshaphat, it says, why is it that you love the wicked and help those, or why is it that you help those who hate me and love the wicked? <laughs> our allegiance has to be to God. And so we'll just keep praying for him. Um, and, and I would definitely not go back. And, and, and Anna, I pray that Yahweh helps you. And I, we, we, we feel like we're in a humanistic society that we're always feeling really have to be nice to everybody, but we forget that we have to be nice to God first. And sometimes the niceness comes with a firmness. We're told in the Bible many times from whom to separate. Not in a mean way, not in a judgmental way, but in the spirit of, um, hey, we love Yahweh. You have uncleanness. That spirit, I can't have it on me. We need to stay faithful to Yahweh so we stay pure and holy. Um, no church, you friend. The, okay, no church, you friend. The followers other than they stay here. Uh, okay, so that one, I didn't quite, it was. Okay, guys, so now we're going to start. <clears throat> Let's go to B Book of Acts. I'm going to read from the tablet, and I just realized I have to change a setting here so that it doesn't close, that go to sleep on me. If you have questions as we go, if I miss the question, please ask it again. And so we're going to do this. Auto lock, never. And I'm ready to go. Okay, we already prayed. God's ready to come. Um, okay, so we're going to stay focused right now on Acts. So if your questions can be about, okay. Um, oh, I'm, well, we can do that. Uh, so how do we know that Yeshua was supposed to rise on the Feast of First Fruits? Well, because he was our first fruits from the dead. So Paul calls him our first fruits from the dead in Corinthians. <laughs> like, you don't even have to work real hard to make that connection. <laughs> that Paul understood that. Isn't that awesome? And so... We also understand that um, they didn't perhaps understand that. It was the first barley harvest. It, you know, was the prophecy, was the Moedim already understood? I'm sure not that full, not in its fullness. But they did understand through the story, uh, they knew that the Messiah was going to come. He was going to cut off, be cut off from his people. We knew then they had the sign of Jonah. Um, so they had Isaiah 53, they had some of these things, but remember even like today, like, did any of you understand that, that, um, 20 years ago, I just started to understand 22 years ago, the 10 tribes awakening, but I bet a lot of us had read that Bible before that 30, 40 years before that. And we're like, we didn't even see it. And so I think there's times where the God awakens us when it's the appropriate time for us to understand the prophecy that's happening. And so the best, best thing with Feast of First Fruits is did they understand that the Messiah was going to rise from the dead? I, I can't say that they did. But when, because it seemed like they were all surprised, even the disciples were like, we thought this was the Messiah. We're so sad he's killed. So it seems to indicate they did not understand that, okay? But when they did understand that on the Feast of First Fruits, they had to bring the first fruits of the barley harvest. And so then when it happened, they're like, oh, they made the connection, right? They understood. And that's why Paul calls him our first fruits from the dead, because they understood that he was the first one to rise from the dead, thus the Feast of First Fruits. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. Hello, hello, shalom, shalom. Okay, okay, that was a good question. Now, I pray my will get clarity from God. Yeah, me too, sweetie. I hope she, he, she, he helps you. Okay, 
Now, Acts chapter 1. We're just going to go kind of quickly, and I'm going to hit the key things. Again, if I don't see your comment, say it again, because sometimes we get a lot of comments, and then I miss it. Or send me the little invite thing if you want to, like, ask your question live. There's a little person button thing at the bottom. It's the, the person with the little box. You can send me that, and I can add you. Okay. The former account I made, O Theopolis, of all that Yeshua began both to do and teach, reading from the New King James Version, by the way, until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. Did he give different commandments? Did he give new laws? No. <laughs> Who gave the commandments on the mountain to Moshe? Moses. Yeshua. That's the personage of God that we can see. Nobody has seen the face of the Father and lived, but Yeshua was right there giving the commandments. So he's sitting there clarifying, teaching, giving them the commandments. Not one of them goes against the Torah. To whom he, or is it different from the Torah or new? To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Elohim. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to part to, from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For Yochanan, John, truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. This is the Moedim. He's foreshadowing to them the Moedim, which is called um, Shavuot in Hebrew. It's in Leviticus 23. It's called the Feast of Weeks, and it's exactly 50 days after the first fruits, Feast of First Fruits. It's, so Feast of First Fruits is always on a first day of the week. To, then we count seven Sabbaths to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Please go read Leviticus 23 for this. And that falls on the Feast of Shavuot. In the Greek, they call it Pentecost because Pentecost is based on the number for 50. Hi, Shalom, AJ. So 50. So 50 days after Feast of First Fruits, we had Shavuot or Pentecost. They're both always on the first day of the week. Don't let anybody convince you that it's on a, a Wednesday or a Thursday or some other day or you start counting after Passover. No, you start counting after the weekly Sabbath during the week of Passover. And the reason you know that is because you count seven Sabbaths to the day after the seventh Sabbath. So if you started counting on Tuesday, uh, the 50 days from there's another Tuesday, Monday wasn't a Sabbath <laughs> prior to that feast of week or feast of weeks. So a little logic goes a long way with this. If you have to count seven Sabbaths to the day after the seventh Sabbath, which is, it's easy because during the week of Passover, week, the weekly Sabbath, that, that Saturday Sabbath, the day after that, we know Yeshua, that's the day he rose from the dead on the first day of the week because that's when they went to the tomb, right? And that year, Yeshua had happened to die on a Wednesday night, so we had three nights and three days in the grave. It doesn't always fall out that way with Passover, but that particular year, it did. The Moedim played out perfectly. Then we count seven Sabbaths, so 49 days, which would, and then to the 50th day, which is the day after the seventh Sabbath. So I hope that makes sense. So don't get involved with these people, or don't even, yeah. Some people try to say, well, you start counting from the day after Passover. No, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. Um, okay, perfect. So they were all assembled. He said to wait for the promise. That was the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, writing the Torah on their hearts and minds okay it didn't say new laws were coming <laughs> hebrews 8 jeremiah 31 look those up it says the the new covenant is going to be with the house of israel and the house of judah doesn't say gentiles and it's the same laws written on our hearts and our minds right no longer are we just going to be like okay i want to see two plus two equals four no, now we're going to understand my C2 and 2. Oh, that's just 4. We have the comprehension, right? Or we don't say, okay, 6 plus 6 is 12. We're going to say, no, that's a dozen. We have the grown-up comprehension. The Holy Spirit writes the laws on our hearts and our minds so we don't have to say, is it wrong to murder? We just know, like, don't murder. Don't even be mad at your brother. Have peace. Have gentleness. Have forgiveness. Have love. That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit takes the law and instead of a checklist, well, I didn't commit murder today, so I'm okay. The checklist, the Holy Spirit's like, yeah, but you were grumpy at that person. You were frustrated at that person. That still counts as murder. Get over it. Come on. Wake up. Grow up. Refine up. You know what I mean? And so he, that's the promise of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5. For um, John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, listen, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Why would Jewish southern kingdom people ask him, will you restore the kingdom to Israel at this time? Because who did they know had been scattered? 
We can see that in the book of John chapter 7 and elsewhere. They under, uh, Peter, Peter addresses his book to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. James addresses his book to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. In fact, one of them calls him the dispersion. The 10 northern tribes have been dispersed by the tiglath Pileser in 730 BC. The Assyrian army had come and taken the northern tribes of Israel away. But the prophecy of the Messiah is that he would bring the tribes of Israel back. Did you know that? That's in Isaiah. Let me quickly look up which one it is because I don't want to lose my place on here. So it's either Isaiah 42 or 49. I'll find it real fast. <clears throat> I want to show you, show you, show you, show you. I think it's right here. Well, okay, let me tell you this. Okay, in Isaiah 42, this is a really good prophecy. So, behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. This is talking about Yeshua. This is the father talking about the son. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Keep that in your mind. He will not cry out nor raise his voice nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break. So he's not going to fight. He's going to walk out the path God has for him. And smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail nor be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth. Listen, listen. And the coastlands, those Gentile nations, shall wait for his law. Ah! Did it say the Gentiles weren't going to get his law when he came? No! No! It literally says the word here in Hebrew is El Torah Tu, El Torah Tu, His Torah. When the Messiah comes, He was going to teach the Gentiles His Torah. Because <laughs> how many people you see on my posts argue with me? Oh, the, the Gentiles don't have to obey the law. That law wasn't for the Gentiles. Jesus told the Gentiles they don't have to. Baloney! Baloney! Baloney, baloney, baloney! One of the prophecies of the Messiah was that he would teach the Gentile coastlands his law. Please remember this in the book of Isaiah. It says both houses will stumble over the Messiah. We understand there's two houses of Israel, the 10 northern tribes, which were ruled ultimately by Ephraim at first. And they got scattered by the Assyrian army in 730 BC. And then we had the southern kingdom, which were the Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They were ruled by the southern kingdom of Judah. That is because um, King Solomon sinned against God and his son Rehoboam lost 10 of the tribes, right? So we have two houses. When we say both houses stumble over the Messiah, Shalom, Catherine, Shalom, Granny, both houses. If I tell you, remember we have a house of Israel and the house of Judah. When I say Judah, tell me how the Jews stumbled. I mean, obviously I can't hear you, but right? You're going to say they didn't accept Jesus as Messiah. Many of them didn't accept Jesus as Messiah when he was here. Bingo! How did Israel stumble over Messiah? Both houses, two, two different stumblings. Because they didn't understand that the Messiah was the lawgiver of Israel. They think he was a lawless person. And they think that the Messiah, that Jesus was lawless. But he wasn't. So the Jews missed who he was in the physical form. And the Christians, the Israelites, the Gentiles, because remember, the 10 northern tribes of Israel got scattered by tiglath pileser starting in 730 BC, went up through Turkey, Prussia area, and then they were scattered throughout Europe. Oh, and then where did the Europeans go? To America. And how did those people just happen to be the ones who believed in God? Oh, because they're the physical Zerah or sperm of Abraham. Not all of them. There's there's very many actual Gentiles, such as Caleb and Ruth, right? Caleb was one of the biggest people in the Bible, and he was a Gentile. He wasn't, he wasn't a Jew. He got grafted into the tribe of Judah. So we must remember that both houses stumble over the Messiah. It also says in the Psalms and Isaiah, Judah is my lawgiver. Ephraim is my helmet. Well, who understands that, that Jesus is the helmet of salvation? Who understands the helmet of salvation? The Christians but they stumble over the lawgiver. And then who understands that Yeshua, the Messiah, must be the lawgiver? The Jews, but they stumble over the fact that he was the salvation that came. Do you get the picture? Do you see what we're talking about here, people? Okay, so right here, um, I wanted to point out a verse to you that he would bring back the 10, okay, so it's gonna be over here in Isaiah 49. 
So that verse was a really good one, Isaiah 42. Don't forget that was Isaiah 42. And then it says right here, right here. Yes, right here, Isaiah 49. <laughs> I love the word of God. I get a little excited on my own there. Okay, verse five. And now Yahweh says, who formed me from the womb to be his servant. That's Yeshua. To bring Jacob back to him so that Israel is gathered to him. For I will, shall be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh and my Elohim shall be my strength. Indeed, he says, is it too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel? Do you understand that the Jews in Israel, the Jews understood that the Messiah had to bring back the 10 tribes of Israel. Restore them. You restore that which has been scattered. You restore that which has been removed. And this is what the disciples were asking Yeshua in Acts chapter one, because it says the Messiah when he comes will raise up the tribes of Jacob. He will bring back the tribes of Jacob because we were told in Ezekiel chapter four that they would be scattered. They were scattered 390 days, Ezekiel laid on his side for 390. So 390 times seven gives of the seven times of punishment that Leviticus and Deuteronomy says would be the judgment, multiplication for not obeying. That it works out to 2,730 years. So we know for a fact the Assyrian army scattered the 10 northern tribes beginning in around 730 BC, a little bit before that and a little bit after that. There was a dispersion period of time. That awakening that punishment ended in it right around the year 2000 which is interesting because that is when the two house movement began and that's when people all over the world began to hear out of the blue that they were Ephraim I physically heard the word I also was told I was a Levite and I was very confused because I didn't know our family history and I kept God kept telling me Ephraim was scattered they're coming back <laughs> and I'm just like I remember being like I don't know who Ephraim is and I literally asked him I'm like Who's Ephraim? <laughs> Who's Ephraim? What are you talking about? And because I was, he was telling me this stuff. And another person in Australia, I had a friend in Australia at the time in New Zealand, and I had a friend in Amsterdam. And we all were hearing the same things right around the year 2000. And we're just like, wow. <laughs> like, and then God showed us this. And the first one that we understand that looked at, the one who really woke up to it was Bacha Wooten, where she understood the Christians are it. But I'm going to tell you, there are Jews who pray every day at the Western Wall for the 10 Northern tribes to return. They pray because they know they haven't returned yet. They pray it's in the Sidur book, the S-I-D-D-U-R, the book of prayers. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't random. This is happening. This isn't random that all of a sudden I heard the word of Ephraim. I didn't know what that meant. This isn't, it wasn't random that thousands of us 30 year, almost 30 years ago, well, 20 some years ago, started hearing this. It, it, it was a prophetic picture of God. And so the disciples were wondering, hey, is this? Because you're the Messiah, we see you're the Messiah. One of the roles of the Messiah was not only that he would come and teach the law to the Gentiles and save the, start saving the Gentiles, which they didn't quite get that yet until we get a little further into Acts. They were a little scared of the Gentiles still. But what they did understand is that the Messiah has to bring back the dispersed, dispersed tribes of Israel. And they're like, is this... Okay, let's go back to that verse. Um, it, um, and it says, verse six again, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Because any Christian can't answer that verse. But if you understand the whole Bible, you can answer that verse now, what he's talking to, to what he's referring. And he, Yeshua said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the father has put in his own authority. He was not going to reveal that to them yet. And some of you need to learn to wait on that. I hear a lot of you... You just want to know answers right away. And what's, what do I tell you? I say, wait. Wait for the Lord. He doesn't owe you an answer. And sometimes he can't give you the answer because you'll mess up the plan. <laughs> you'll get too far ahead. He tells you what you need to know when you need to know it. So just remember to trust him and to wait. Um, okay. Okay. Heather. Hi, Heather. Shalom. Shalom. We're going through Acts. We're going through the book of Acts. We just went through the prophecies in Isaiah 42 that says that when the Messiah comes, he will teach the coastlands his law. That word in Hebrew, there's El Torah too. The Gentiles were actually taught the law by the Messiah. Not that he didn't tell them they didn't have to obey it. It was right there in Isaiah 42. The prophecy of the Messiah was that the law would even go to the Gentiles. And then we talked about in Isaiah 49, where it talks about one of the prophecies of the Messiah would be that he would call back the 10 northern tribes of Israel. He'd bring back the dispersed of Jacob during this time. So the disciples were wondering, is, that the, is this the time, Lord? 
And he's like, no, 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 that's, you know, you can't, you aren't going to know that right now. And then verse eight, he's, um, sorry, I'm just going to read seven again. And he said to them, Acts 1, verse 7, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Where does it start? With the Jews. Why? Because the Jews did not get scattered for 2,730 years. The Jews got scattered for 70 years. We are told in Scripture that the Jews offended less than Ephraim because Ephraim was idolatrous. Ephraim was idolatrous. Obedience is better than sacrifice in God's eyes. And what did we say? The scripture says, not we, Judah is my lawgiver, Israel is my helmet. Jews offend God less because at least they obey. Now they add to his laws with the Talmud, which pff, that's what Yeshua came against. But the Christians completely reject them. And that is blasphemous to God. He hates that. And so that's why they got scattered more because if you look in the history books, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, first, and through Chronicles, you're going to see the 10 northern tribes of Israel with their idolatry and their pagan practices offended God much more than the Jews who were at least trying to obey. Verse 9. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? So that's the word shamayim. Do not let anybody convince you that the firmament means solid dome. That, oh my gosh. The Hebrew word has no indication of any firmness or a dome. A, the old English word firmament got mistranslated by somebody. You can even look this up on Answers in Genesis. There's like historical document of the person who decided that firmament meant that it was a firm dome. It was because somebody was kind of simple and didn't understand English. And they literally thought the word firmament meant it was firm. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> like it was old English and it was a way that they described the heavens Hashemayim means the waters above oh my gosh please don't go down that route guys it's crazy just please don't don't go down that route so when he's going up to the heavens the word heaven in Hebrew is Hashemayim and just means like the above waters this, this same Yeshua who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Well, that's Zechariah 14. We know he will return to the Mount of Olives at the Feast of Trumpets after the tribulation. Okay. Um, his own authority. Well, um, okay. So then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem. Okay. This is the Mount of Olives. We are told Yeshua ascends here ascended from the Mount of Olives, Zechariah 14, which was written before this book, Zechariah 14 already said that Messiah would return to the Mount of Olives. Isn't that interesting? From where he ascended, he's going to descend. Um, so it's a Sabbath day journey. Now the Sabbath day journey was Judaism. It doesn't say these guys were following that. It's just that was a unit of measure they used. Just like us today, we like, oh, they're having their, you know, pagan must season, their Christmas season. We understand when that season is. It doesn't mean we're adhering to it. And you've got to remember that some of them were still coming out of some of these man-made rules in the Talmud. It doesn't say they were adhering to this. It just says they knew that distance. This is me too. I try to explain everything. I just need to remember to wait on him. Yep. Oh, that's okay, Carissa. I don't know if I missed something, but okay. So, and when they had entered, they went in up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew. Please remember, <laughs> let me keep stopping here. James is not a word in Hebrew. <laughs> This was the word Jacob, but the King James translators decided they wanted to honor King James, and so they switched the name of Jacob here to James. People, come on, right? So Peter, James, Peter, Jacob, Yochanan, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matiyahu, Yaakov, the son of Alphaeus, and Shimeon, the zealot, and Yehuda of Yaakov. That's how it would be. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Yeshua, and with his brothers. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Now, the word disciples in Hebrew is talmidim. It simply means students. Altogether, the number of names was about 120 and said, okay, the Yeshua taught for three and a half years. And the only disciples, the only students they had was 120. 120 people. It is not about numbers, people. And he only chose 12 close to him. Twelve. Twelve. It says in the book of um, 
Matt, uh, John chapter 2, that he knew what was in the hearts of man. He had, he had no need that anyone should tell him what was in it. And he did not commit himself to those who believed in him because he knew it was in their hearts. Just because we believe in Yeshua doesn't mean he has committed himself to us. He went away from them. Why? Because not very many people are zealous. And in the book of Revelation, we are warned that he will vomit out the lukewarm. So let's make sure none of us are lukewarm because many are called, few are chosen, difficult is the path, and few who are who find it. So we need to make sure that we zealously love him with all our hearts, minds, soul, and strength. Okay, question here. I had a question above. Mm. Yes, you'll just need to type it again because if I don't see it, then just type the whole question or copy and paste until I see it. Okay, um, okay, all together, okay, I said that. Verse 16, men and brethren, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested him. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his entrails gushed out. Yeah, that's, that's gruesome. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, so that the field is called in their own language, which is the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling place be desolate and no one live in it. And let another take his office. Do you understand how the scripture was so alive and active that they, they understood what the scriptures were saying prophetically? Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Yeshua went in and out among us, beginning with the, from the baptism of Yochanan to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. Please remember the baptism of John. Again, baptism was not a new concept. It was the baptism symbolically of the repentance of sin that was new. Baptism is the word baptizo in the Greek and all through the Greek Septuagint. You can see they were baptizing utensils. A woman got baptized at the end of her menstrual cycle. Men and women got baptized after they had relations. At the end of the, at the, end of the day at sunset, you would get baptized, so to speak, or washed with water. Right? It's a mikvah in Hebrew, baptizo in Greek. And so the concept of baptism wasn't new. What was new is that Yochanan John was saying, let's get ready and clean for our Savior, and let's signify a symbolic spiritual state of uncleanness to clean. Okay? What Bible should we be reading? The Hebrew. <laughs> But if you can't read the Hebrew, I really like the New King James Version Bible. Please stay away from the Sefer Scriptures. Please stay away from the Sefer Scriptures. Please stay away from the Apocrypha. Please, please, please. Until you are versed in the Torah. Once you know the Torah, you will understand that the Apocrypha books are against the Torah. But you can't, when you're new, you're going to get very confused. The book of Enoch was written by a Spanish sailor who got paid a lot of money because there was a reference to a book of Enoch. So he goes to Ethiopia, comes back with it, gets all the money. It is not the book of Enoch. It is not the book that was referenced in the Bible. It is made up. The reason the Catholic Church likes those books is because they're universal. The reason the Masoret scribes, the Masoret scribes rejected them is because they knew the Torah. Judah's my lawgiver. Ephraim's my helmet. Well, the lawgivers, the people who understood the Torah, the laws of God, understood that all those apocryphal books came so much against the, the Torah that they were not scripture, <laughs> that they could not be counted as scripture. They are so contrary to the Torah. The book of Jubilees is horrible. I mean, just stay away from it. Get in the stuff that we know is the word of God. God specifically gave the, to Moses Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Once you know that, like the back of your hand, then you will understand what scripture is of God and what's not. Because in Deuteronomy 13, it says that is the basis that we, we go off of scripture. So the reason the Catholics have the Apocrypha in their books is because they're fine with that stuff. People always say, well, they took it out. No, the Catholic Church has it in. And yes, men took it out, but it, the, the Masora scribes, the Masora text did not ever have those books in it. It never was codified, never allowed to be scripture by those who understood the Torah. The only people who accepted it were the people who didn't care about the Bible. So be careful about um, that. There is a seven-year tribulation coming up, sweetie. So Anne replied to Tristan, but there's a... Yes, so Tristan's right. There's a seven-year agreement and three and a half years of tribulation, the last three and a half years. Janie, I still haven't seen your question come back through, hun. Um, so you can ask it again, sweetie. Um, okay, so this has been good so far, right? I like that. Did you guys already know that Isaiah 42 and 49 prophecy, how they go together with this? Have you all seen that before? Come see what's that? Okay. Anyway, let's start in verse 22. Beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us. Again, that's not a new concept, just the 
anyway, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed two, Yosef called Barsavas, who was surnamed Yus um, Justice. That would be Yosef. Um, how would they, that would be, I don't know, I'm not going to try. Matthias, and they prayed out loud, you, O Yahweh, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go up to, to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Okay, now, was there a question I missed? Hi, Morgan, I was wondering where you were, sweetie. Uh, okay, nope, but I do now. Okay, awesome. Hi, though you said not to believe the Apocrypha, what about the fact that the Ethiopian Bible complete is older than you? Well, um, it's... There's a lot of things people can say things that they want. The book of Enoch, the original book of Enoch would have been older, but the one found was not. The book of Enoch, the Spanish king wanted to find the book of Enoch because he had been reading the Bible. It says, who will find this book of Enoch for me? I'll give you a large sum of money. If you read the book of Enoch, it contradicts the Torah so much that you have to either believe the Torah or believe the book of Enoch. I don't care. You can have an old book full of lies too. <laughs> so let's pretend that it was older. Let's pretend that it was older. The fact that it's so contradictory to Torah, and I know for a fact, because I do hear the voice of God, I, I, for whatever reason, he speaks directly in my ear. I've had a number of people in the room with me who have said they know God's speaking. He's right there standing with me. He told me, stay away from it. Do not touch it. And my husband, who was a pastor of a big church, he, and thank God he's repented. He repented. He's not there. Um, he read the Apocrypha years ago. And when, so when I told him what God told me not to touch it, he said, absolutely not. He goes, it's so contrary to the Bible that you, he goes, if you don't know the Bible, you could get fooled and it's fantastical. He goes, so people who have this sense of like fantasticalness or whatever, he goes, they could get intrigued by it. But he goes, it's, it's totally unbiblical and it actually contradicts the scripture. So Morgan has a lot of information on that too. I just saw her on there, Hardy and everything. So stay away from it. I just know that as the word of God, I would say, thus saith Yahweh, because that's what he told me. And when he's, I, I'm very careful what I say. Very careful, very careful what I say, but I know he told me that. And then anything I've heard brought to me from, the, from the, that book of Enoch is so contradictory to Torah. So just be careful, okay? I don't judge anybody if you want to do that. Question. Um, Acts 120, is it for, it is written in the book of Psalms, let us dwell in a place to come to the lizard be I was in the field of blood. Why did God command them not to live there? Um, for it is written in the book of the Psalms, let his dwelling place become desolate and let there be no one living in it. I think it's just taking his office, like living, being alive in that position. Um, and so I haven't really thought a lot about that one, I guess. Um, other than it would, just, I guess we could look at it. Where, did, where Psalm is it from? Actually, I got to find which Psalm it is. Um, um, let's see if we can find which where that is. Um, um, okay, so Psalm 109. Psalm 109. Um, it just says, let his days be few and let another take his office. So it doesn't say in here and let another. Um, why did God command them not to live there? Yeah, it doesn't. I don't see. It could be a translational error too, because it just says right here, let, um, <clears throat> just says, let, and let another take his office. So maybe you can find that verse, Janie, as we're looking here, and, and we're going to stay focused on the Acts. On um, that one, I, just, I don't know. I don't, those little things, I often just like, I don't know. They don't catch me off guard, so I just don't really think too much about it. Um, yeah, and Tyler, I don't judge anybody. So if you're going to believe, I mean, if you want to hold to those things, fine. I just know. That for whatever reason, like out of the blue, 22 years ago, God said 13 days, no food. He's always spoken to me. I've always had prophetic dreams. I didn't understand what was going on. Um, then when you get old enough to understand, you have, you, there's prophet, product, prophecy happening. Then you're like, oh, I'm not crazy. <laughs> or like, I don't know, you know. Um, I've never had anything he's spoken to me not come true. And, and then he does, my ear will get really red and hot. And I know specifically on that, because somebody said, hey, you need to read this book of Enoch. And I heard the Lord say, do not touch it. And I was like, oh, okay. And he said, it is not of me. And so there is a book of Enoch that we just don't have currently. But the book of Jubilee is so anti-Gentiles. It is so contrary to scripture. So I just, guess what? If you know the Torah, if that's all you had, that would tell you the heart of God anyway. Okay. I, um, I have a few I read alongside with my ISR, Graciela. Okay. Oh, did you find it, Annie? Anna? 69. She found it. Look at that girl. Good, because I was like, which one are they talking about? So, 
it's funny. It is. I think it's nice how we all work as a body. How people notice different things, like that little thing there. I didn't even think about that. I was like, yeah. let their dwelling let their dwelling place be desolate, let no one live in their tents. Um, but that's plural. Who is he talking to in this? That's taken out of context, isn't it? Because um, yeah, so we can see here it's a plural. It's a plural. And it's talking to, about them. It's not actually even talking about that. So I think in that time, the Lord must have been talking to the disciples something prophetically through that verse. It's alive and active. But it wasn't actually talking about that in relation. You can see it's not even referring originally. <laughs> it's not referring to what Judas was going to do. So it's interesting. Um, okay. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. Now that is the day of Shavuot in Hebrew. It is Leviticus 23. It was already a prophesied Moedim appointment festival. It's an appointment that Yeshua had, God had with his people. They were all with one accord in one place. The reason for that is because this is one of the three festivals that their men are commanded to go to Jerusalem yearly when you have the temple. So that's why they're all here at the temple in Jerusalem. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. That is the word languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Whenever I've spoken in tongues, it is Hebrew. When my husband so humbly asked Father God if this is real because the church he had been a pastor in said that, there was no such thing as the infilling of the Holy Spirit. My husband said, Father God, if this is real, just please show me. I just want to know your truth. I have never seen a grown man. My husband's huge. Not fat, but just like huge. He's very manly. He fell to his face speaking in tongues. And he it was Hebrew. Because I kept hearing, Baruch <laughs> I kept hearing Hebrew. And he had no control over what he was doing. And two grown men were holding his arms. And I promise you at that point, my husband didn't even believe that it would happen. He just wanted to, he just humbled himself before the Lord and said, show me if it's real. <laughs> and uh, so don't let people bark like dogs and tell you they're, they're speaking in tongues. Don't let people cluck, 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 cluck. Don't let them do that. That's not it. This is a language. And the reason they had a language this day we're going to keep reading. This is what to understand about the function of the... See, when Christians don't understand the whole Bible, they don't understand this is a prophesied Moedim. They take scripture out of context and then they want to understand it. So they do things and the spirits come in and move through them that are not the spirits of God. So be really careful. Be really careful. Let's keep going. Just like the, the Jews stumble and the Christians stumble. Both houses stumble. So... And the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 5, And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all, then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look! Are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and all the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in, their, in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. What was the purpose of the tongues? What was the purpose of the language? What was the prophetic picture here? The 10 Northern tribes had been scattered in 730 BC. Acts chapter one, they asked Yeshua, is this the time you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Because that's the prophecy in Isaiah 14, nine, that the Messiah will bring back the dispersed tribes of Jacob, the 10 Northern tribes. This is a prophetic picture that now they're going to take it not just to the Jews, because Yeshua stayed there. He was there for three years. He says to the Jew first and then the Gentile. The Gentiles, Melech Goyim, Genesis chapter, is it 48, verse 19, or 46, verse 19, when Jacob crosses his hands and tells him that Jake, um, Ephraim and Manasseh will become the Melech Goyim, the fullness of the Gentiles. Hosea says they will physically become the Gentiles. Hosea said the 10 northern tribes will become the Gentiles. Are you seeing this picture here? It's at this time, at the Feast of Weeks, or what is called Shavuot in Hebrew Pentecost, at this prophetic 
Law of God festival. The law didn't go away. They were still keeping the law of God after Jesus rose from the dead. This is 10 days after he rose. I mean, after he ascended. 50 days after he rose from the dead. They're still keeping the feast. His closest allies, his closest disciples would have known if the law was done. His disciples would have known as if his victory was that the law went away. No, they were still keeping the law right here. Can I get an amen? Right here, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, those closest to him were still obeying the law. And what happened was that they understood a prophetic picture that the Holy Spirit was now going to take the gospel, the good works of God were going to be proclaimed to the ends of the earth, to every nation. And that is what the multiple language was showing. The language came upon them and different people so that they could go out and declare the gospel to the Gentiles that God said the message would go to Isaiah 42 and Isaiah 49. Never did it say the Torah wouldn't go to the Gentiles, Isaiah 42. We just read it. Jesus Yeshua would take his Torah to those coastland Gentiles. Am I making sense or is anybody still confused on that? Do I need to make some more connection there? This is extremely important for you to understand. They were still obeying the law. God did not tell them. Jesus didn't say, hey, guys, <laughs> I got news for you. As soon as I rise from the dead, you do not have to obey the law anymore. <laughs> no, he says, hey, wait here, wait here, wait here in Jerusalem. I mean, you got this feast coming up. You got this Moedim coming up. Wait here until you get the Holy Spirit. This Moedim was the prophetic time for them to receive the influence of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit showed that then they were going to take that gospel to the scattered of Israel. Gentiles can still come. It doesn't matter. If you're an actual physical Gentile like Caleb and Ruth, great. You're grafted in. But God didn't make two separate kingdoms of heaven. He didn't say, uh, okay, the new Jerusalem, you, Gen you Israelites get to go in through these 12 tribes. Gentiles, I'm going to make you a separate kingdom. Gentiles, you don't even have to obey the law. No. It says he would bring them into the fold, keep them the, teach them the same covenants, the same ways. Oh, guys, this is good, isn't it? Okay. Um... I'm very confused about meat. Some meat, no meat. Okay, okay. we're going to stay on Acts for a minute here. Jenny was, so please, any of those other comments, the questions that are not referring to Acts and what we're reading about, ask them at the end when I open up to questions or message me privately. Either one is great. This right now, we're going to stay focused on the book of Acts. Um, what is the book of Solomon? Okay, we're going to, we're not going to go. I'm not going to get off track right now. So what people, so no. So Laura, not everybody speaks in Hebrew when they speak in tongues. Do you notice from every nation? So the, the Medes, the Elamites, the Parthians, the Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, all these people heard them speaking in his own language. So I speak in Hebrew when I speak in tongues. My husband spoke in Hebrew. When he spoke in tongues, when and when he does, but that's not everybody. Some people have Spanish, probably, or French, or Italian, or whatever. Right? The whole purpose here was to show that now this, your tongue is going to be loosed to take the message to all nations. We're going to get my people back. I'm sending out the fishers of men to bring my children back. Remember, we read about that. Jeremiah 16, Jeremiah 23 talk about the. What do they talk about? The second exodus. And he's going to send fishers of men. Whoa, that sounds a little like Yeshua, doesn't it? I'm going to make you fishers of men. There we go. Um, right, so just Graciela, really pray to the Father because there is a spirit that's in the church that does teach people, and I do believe it opens up to a false spirit. Um, there's not, not everybody speaking in tongues is not the spirit of Yahweh, but just ask that he sets guard over it because you will. I mean, I was 13 when I got filled with the Holy Spirit and I was, I just remember it going to come up in front of my parents and stuff. And I was like, Oh no, <laughs> Oh no, Oh no. And I just, and I felt it just go down. You'll know when it's the true spirit of God, you won't cluck like a dog or uh, cluck like a chicken, bark like a dog. You won't just clack. Those are demonic spirits. It will give You'll know. And just pray. And here's the thing. When in doubt, it doesn't, you don't need that spirit of tongues. What's most important is prophecy. Know God. Be intimate with him. I know some of the most Holy Spirit-filled people that have never spoken in a different tongue, like in, in that way and prophetically. I know they're filled with the Holy Spirit. So that was just a sign that was being used. It doesn't mean you have to. Um, 
Okay. The each tribe has a Yeah, so you can't, so Yair Davidi, um, Britam, has a really good understanding, and, and he does a lot of history of where the tribes went. We don't know exactly. We don't know exactly, but we do know, like, the tribe of Dan can be linked to Britain and stuff like that, so it is really cool. Um, okay, so we got a lot of people understanding. I got the amens, praise God. Too bad. I was a little slow on, um, good night, y'all. Can't wait to watch this. Okay, Anna, have a blessed night, sweetie. Um, Okay, so people understand got you in my mind is on church of the Babylon call. You're right, Janie, you're right. Um okay. Oh RJ, did I miss a question? That correct are you? Tongues perhaps might not be your gift. Yes, RJ, you're right. You're right, you're right. Not everybody has that. And and honestly, like it's like even Paul's like that's not the most important one. <laughs> Let's focus on love and prophecy, laying on hands and healing. Things that are a little bit more important. Because, I mean, when I'm speaking in tongues, usually it's just like, oh, Father God, take over. I don't know what to say right now. Um, okay. Now, they were declaring the wonderful works of God. They weren't just saying, look at me. I'm born again. I spoke in tongues. Which apostolic um, people do, the Pentecostals. Like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to make fun, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Do you speak in tongues? Are you saved? Well, you could go die on the cross, like the sinner on the cross never spoke in tongues and he was saved, <laughs> right? Don't attach any work to salvation. Okay, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, they're full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day, like it's morning. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says Elohim, that I will pour. Now, they weren't quite in the last days, right? They were the beginning of the wheat harvest. That's what the Feast of Pentecost is. Let me pause right here. So those of you who don't understand, the Feast of Pentecost in the Hebrew is called the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. It is the first fruits of the wheat harvest. What at the Feast of Tabernacles, that's the end of the wheat harvest. When does Yeshua return the second time? At the Feast of Trumpet, during the Fall Feast. Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, or Feast of Trumpets, he returns, Day of Atonement, he judges the world, Feast of Tabernacles, he gathers in his children, that's the harvest, he reigns with us, his millennial reign, he's with us. So the Feast of Pentecost, that's when, they say that's when the church began? No, 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 no. That's when they began calling back the dispersed of Israel. That's what was happening, people. It was good. So, it shall come to pass in the last days, says Elohim, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see, shall, <laughs> shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Having dreams, having visions, write them down. Some of you give me a little bit too vague of details, so I have to talk with you about it. We could get the interpretation, but God can show you. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, Whoa, God would even speak to a woman. Imagine that. <laughs> he used a donkey, but so many people, like I had somebody tonight rebuke me as a woman. I said, well, Yahweh stand as judge between us. 22 years ago, the Lord said, don't, because people were telling me I couldn't speak as a woman. I said, okay, Lord. I sat there silent. He goes, if I give you a prophetic word, you speak. And I was like, but they're telling me to be silent. He goes, you don't answer to them. You answer to me. And then he said, Deborah, Hulda, Anna, Philip's daughters, he said, I didn't, <laughs> and then he just opened my eyes. So, your old men, your daughters, your sons, your men servants, and your maid servants, don't you dare silence or squelch the body of God. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. God can use donkeys. God can use women. God will use men, old, young, children. Who are we to limit God? God never said in the Torah that a woman couldn't teach. That was a Judaism rule. Paul was a Pharisee. He was still getting over certain things. He specifically even says it's only a uh, wife, not over a husband, if you read the Greek. But just being careful there. So, men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the, blood into, and the moon into blood. We know that that did not happen then. <laughs> and Paul, or... Um, who was it speaking? Peter knew it wasn't happening then, but he also understood that it was the beginning of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and this prophetic picture happening. But now, all of you, this is the time of the prophecy of Joel. You're the 
end of the harvest. You're the fullness of the harvest. This is when the crops are ripe and he's getting you guys. He's, he's getting you and he's going to pull up the tear from amongst you, the T-A-R-E. That's why you're being separated right now. You are growing to become full in the head, the, the, the bud to become full. You are growing to mature. The tear are going to be taken down and slaughtered soon because they won't stand the coming judgment because they have not been prepared. You are prepared. Your roots are growing. You are getting watered. You are, you are getting satiated. You are growing, 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 growing in God. The tear are wilting right now because the tear don't bow their heads when they ripe. You are. You are bowing to your sovereign as you come to obedience of Torah. And, and listen to this. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls in the name of Yahweh shall be saved. Who calls on the name of Yahweh. If you call on Yahweh in truth to save you, you're saved from eternal damnation. Now, are you still sitting in Egypt? Maybe. That would suck because you don't get a very big reward in the kingdom of heaven then. Let's get out of there. Sorry, Melissa, could you repeat about women teaching, please? When does these people come and harvest? Please share the verse. Okay, let's go back here. I missed it. Okay, the donkey was a female. <laughs> oh, woohoo! <laughs> um, okay, hi, Faith. Sweetie, we're in Acts 2. We just got done with verse 21. Okay. Um, please make it. So Tyler, I need, I, okay. I have a YouTube channel, but I haven't had any videos on there yet other than shorts and you're right. Um, I need to do it. I got it today. I got this light ring so that the lighting's better. If you all know me, I hate being on video. I hate it with a passion, but I'm going to do it because I know the father's telling me that's time. That's next that's coming so i'm getting ready and today i did a lot of research this morning about it um i love you all isabel okay so i think that i'm okay please make a youtube channel be made okay so it's called god no what is it called yeah it's called god's little hummingbird the youtube channel i only have a few shorts on there because i haven't had time but i did get the stuff like today i was researching this morning how to get the videos on there and then I'm like, you know, I'm just natural. Don't, obviously, God's told me not to wear makeup. I don't color my hair. So I don't have to worry too much about editing the video perfectly either. So I'm going to get it going. I'm going to, perfect is the enemy of the good. Um, okay, the donkey was a female. Acts 2.18. Thank you for telling her that. When does he say he will come in harvest? Okay, so those are the perfect, Tyler. This is a moedim. The word moedim in Hebrew means appointments. It means an appointed time to meet. If I go to Israel today and you meet a Jew on the street and you say, hey, I need to make a moed with you tomorrow. That means I need to make appointments with you. So in Leviticus 23, we, Yeshua has appointed times to come. Paul says he comes at the sound of a trump. And we always, there's a few verses in Thessalonians in the New Testament where it talks about him returning at the sound of a trumpet. Well, the reason is because the feast at which he returns is called Yom Teruah, Feast of Trumpets. It is the only holiday every year. We do not know the day or the hour of it in advance. Isn't that cool? We don't know what day we're going to see the new moon sighting on the seventh month. That's why you cannot go off the Zadok calendar. You can't go off these unbiblical calendars. You must go back to the way we did it before the Babylonian exile and Judaism got their hands on the stinking thing and messed it up. We have to go off the new moon sighting or then you miss the whole prophecy of being expectantly waiting and watching. It's over a three-day period. So Yeshua returns at the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah. Zechariah 14 confirms it's a day that none of us know except for the Lord of that month. It's neither evening nor night. I'm sorry, neither day nor night, but at evening it shall happen. That, we're, that evening is when we go out and look for the new moon sighting. If you see the sliver of the moon, boom, you blow the trumpet, blow the shofar, you scream. And it's usually only a few minutes that it's visible, but that's when we will see the light. And that light that year is Yeshua. Then 10 days, 10 days later, we have the Yom Kippur, Day of Judgment, when he judges the world. Five days after that, we have the Feast of Tabernacles. That's the in-gathering. And that's what it's called in Hebrew. You'll see it even in the, in the Bible. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, where it talks about the feast. The feast of ingathering. Well, why is that? Because he's gathering his people. Oh, it's just so beautiful. I love it. So God speaks to you on the harvest. You aren't a farmer. If you don't have that, you're missing out so much of the picture of God's kingdom because it's such a beautiful picture. Okay, I hope that answered it. Tyler, ask it if not. Sorry, Melissa, could you repeat about women teaching? Well, Deborah was, lead Deborah was anointed to be the teacher of Israel the leader of Israel, um, by God himself says, um, I just read it the other day, I sent you Moses, Eli, uh, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. God himself included Miriam in there. Um, in the book of 
in the book of Corinthians, it only says a wife not to teach the husband. And it says women not to chatter because there was a separation in that time of the synagogues where the women were on one side, the men were on the other. And they were yelling across the thing to say, hey, 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 he's just ask your husbands when you get home. Um, the Philip's daughters were prophets. Anna was a prophetess. Holda was a prophetess. Um, and it says right there in Isaiah, right here, we're quoting from Isaiah. Uh, so recording in Acts chapter two, recording from Joel. And it literally says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on your men, your, your sons, your daughters, your men servants, your maidservants. He didn't miss the women. <laughs> he didn't skip the women. He does the old and the young, the women. So, yeah, there's that question. Um, praise God. I'm, I'm just seeing this. Just hopped on Facebook and saw your live. Yes, you can You can go back and look at that. Janelle, hello, sweetie. I hope you do. I'm praying for you all the time. Hi, Amber. We have talked a little bit already in the beginning. You, might, um, you guys could just go back and watch it at your leisure. I, I put it on there. Thank you, Janie. For for, oh, she found my YouTube channel. She knows it better than me. <laughs> um, um, don't even worry. Don't ever say sorry to me. You guys, I don't expect anybody to be here. I do this for you. So at your convenience, you get back to it and do it. Um, now, verse 22, Acts 2. Men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshua of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands. What kind of hands? What kind of hands? What kind of hands? Lawless. That's a bad thing to be lawless. Because remember, Jews in Judaism were lawless because they rejected the Torah to hold to the Talmud primarily. That's what Yeshua taught against. And Christians, the Gentile nations, had no law. He don't, like, did you know that both Jews and Gentiles killed Yeshua? And technically, if you want to think about it, nobody killed Yeshua. He laid down his life for us. So the Jews delivered him up. The Gentiles killed him. Interesting. Jews delivered him up. Romans, Roman Catholic Christians killed him. Jew and Gentile worked together to kill the Messiah. But honestly, nobody could have killed him if he hadn't given his life willingly for us. Because he could have called down angels. So by lawless hands have crucified and put to death whom Elohim raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Why? Because he was sin free. People have been arguing on my reels that Yeshua sinned and broke the Torah. Full, low, knee. He could not have risen from the dead if he sinned. That's what stood against us from rising from the dead. The law pointed out our sin. The holiness of God pointed out, and that law pointed out our wickedness. Oops, we messed up. We had no hope. Yeshua said, hey, I'll go do it. I'll go do it. I'll give my life to pay the price for them. I will overcome sin so that sin can't have its grips on them. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, our, no, our husbands don't need to teach us. Um, Yahweh is our teacher. We all get the Holy Spirit. Um, and so your husbands do not need to teach you. It's saying if you're in like a synagogue. Okay, I hate when women like chatter during fellowship. I hate hate it it annoys me and that's what they did back then they were like D -d 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 -d. and then what did you they were talking and they're like hey did you get what he said and they're like just ask your husbands at home not that our husbands are supposed to, but your husband should teach you but it doesn't mean you can't also get understand <laughs> and like you're the helper the husband is definitely the head of the home the de the husband is the head of the relationship but it doesn't say he won't speak to women as well that's what the whole point okay so let's move on from that top thought. And if you have more questions, you can ask, we can talk about later. Men and women, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried and his tomb. Oh, I meant, I like totally skipped all this because I got sidetracked. Okay. Verse 24, which you already read it, but I'm going to read it again. For whom Elohim raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, I foresaw Yahweh always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in Hades. Now, there's a lot of controversy on that word here. Basically just means Sheol, the resting place for the dead, where the dead are. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Now, he was killed, but he... Right? He, he, the ultimate thing, we aren't going to be, our soul will not see corruption if we follow in the footsteps of Messiah because he died to pay the price. You have made known to me the ways of life. You, have, you will make me full of joy in your presence. 
Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he's both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that Elohim had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Messiah to sit on his throne, he, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ. Oh, there is your answer. There is your answer, who asked it earlier. In this prophecy, you're right. I don't know why I didn't think about it earlier. Sometimes, you know, we don't put everything together at the moment. And I didn't prepare. <laughs> Obviously, like normal. This prophecy, if they had understood this prophecy from David, they saw that his flesh wouldn't. But now, let me tell you what most Jews thought. Most Jews said the Messiah wouldn't die. Well, he can't die because he doesn't suffer corruption. He didn't. Do you understand? This is where they tripped on this verse because those in Judaism were like, no, the Messiah can't die. But what we see Isaiah 53 where it says he was going to die. Then put with this verse, they would see like, oh, you're not going to let him see corruption. You know, he's not going to, he's not going to stay in Sheol. This is a prophecy that he would rise from the dead. And if they had, if God had opened their understanding to it, they would have seen that. I will tell you, I don't believe the disciples understood this until now. The reason being because they were so disheartened when Yeshua was put to, to death that they said, you remember when Yeshua was walking with him? They're like, we really hope that this was the Messiah, but he's dead. But if they had known he was the Messiah, they wouldn't have lost hope. And they said, he's going to come back in three days. But none of them thought that. They were surprised that the grave was empty. That's where I believe they didn't understand this prophecy yet at that point. Once it came to fruition, then they're like, oh, right, right. And then Yeshua explained it to them when he did rise from the dead. And so then they're explaining to the other people this prophecy. David was prophetically prophesying of the Messiah returning, or I mean, of um, rising from the dead. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would rise up the, raise up the Messiah to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Messiah, that his soul was not left in Sheol, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Yeshua Elohim has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of Elohim and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear, Peter's understanding. He rose from the dead. Here is the Holy Spirit that we were prophesied to get and is poured out on you guys. For David does not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, Yahweh said to my Adonai, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that Elohim has made this Yeshua, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent. Let's pause on this. What did Peter say? Repent. That's the Hebrew word teshuvah, to shuv, to turn. Repent from what? Lawless deeds, because the lawless hands put him to death. <laughs> Did they say, just believe in Jesus and like, then you're fine. Don't obey the law anymore. No, no. If you repent, you have to stop doing the wrong and you go to the right. The wrong was breaking God's laws, sinning, sin is transgression of the law, and the right is going to God's laws. Okay, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. The word for there means because. It's the Greek word because. This is what gets Pentecostals tripped up. Let's read it the way it really reads. Baptized in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach because of the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because do not attach baptism to salvation. If you believe in Yeshua with your heart and you're sitting there on your floor weeping before the Lord, begging him to forgive you, and then you die, not getting baptized, you're fine. You're fine, brother. You're fine, sister. You're fine. You didn't need to get baptized to be saved. The baptism is a witness and a sign of what happened within your soul. You say, I accepted Yeshua. I repent of my sins. I'm going to go get washed as a statement of my faith for being changed from unclean to clean. Okay. <clears throat> for the promises to you and to your children, to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our Elohim will call. The far off ones were the dispersed of Israel. Um, you know, hallelujah. 
Satan thought he was the big guy, but the big guy knew. Okay, verse 23 does not refer to the Torah as the way of life. Verse 28 does that. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yep, we, I'm sorry, I went too far there, but yes, it was, if we, I was thinking about going there because it's in the Psalms, because then it goes on to literally say, it's talking about the Torah. Great catch there, Dale. Um, exactly, exactly. Um, okay. Um, okay, what did I miss? Um, okay. Okay, I think I got them all. Um, we on explanation of chapter nine. Okay, so now, okay. Ah, where did, see, I, okay. Verse 40, and with many other words, he testified and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Okay, if you are gonna call the law of God perversion, you're perverse. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. That's not what they need to be saved from. They didn't need to be saved from the law of God. They need to be saved from lawless, wicked deeds. Satan's, because God gave the law, Satan said, don't obey God. You don't obey God's laws. God is good. Satan's bad. Listen to God. Don't listen to Satan. Okay. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Do you really think the apostles were teaching anything different? Why were they here on the feast, the commanded feast of Shavuot, if they were teaching against the law? They weren't. They were teaching the Torah. That's what they taught people. We just saw that in Isaiah 42 and Isaiah 49. It says, Yeshua is going to teach. Well, Isaiah 42 in particular. He's going to teach the Gentiles the law. The apostles. He told the apostles to teach them all his commandments. Yeshua's commandments were the same as the Father's. Nothing he, nothing in the in the Gospels ever was again, different from the law of Moses. It just explained what it meant. So, interesting. Then those who gladly received that word were baptized, um, verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. If you're not doing signs and wonders, you have to really ask where your faith is. If you're, if you're not having things happen, perhaps your faith is in medicine or doctors rather than the healing of God. If you're, if you're not doing, getting prophetic dreams and stuff, maybe you're blocking God from speaking to you. So really ask that he would remove any hindrance for you so that you can truly have the fullness of the spirit that's supposed to glorify God, not make you look good. That's the other thing. If your heart's not pure, he can't give you a lot of things because if you're going to use it for your own glory and your own accolades, he can't trust you because it has to be used all for his kingdom because none of us are, we're all garbage. Our righteousness is like filthy rags. Only he is to be glorified through what we do for him. Now, all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as needed as anyone had need. Now, this doesn't mean it's wrong to own land. In Ezekiel 47, we can literally see that when Yeshua returns, we divide up the land against, um, again amongst the children of Israel. Any Gentile that wants a portion gets a tribe, gets a portion, whatever tribe he chooses to sojourn. This isn't saying you can't have land. This isn't saying that. At this particular period in time, there was something that happened amongst the believers where they put their goods together to help because they were being persecuted really heavily. This was a new thing, and Jews hated them, and they're just about to get reamed by the Catholics on top of it, the Romans, which they weren't Catholics yet. But they're, like, getting persecuted like crazy, so they were communally here. They didn't, right? Rome was ruling the empire. They didn't have their lands like they used to have. They didn't have the land. Um... It wasn't in the hands of, of Israel. So you have to remember the time frame here because some people will say that we should all be doing this now. And it's like, well, no, this is for a specific time in history. Ezekiel 47 literally says we're all going back to the land and dividing the land and getting lands again. God has told people for the last 30 years to prepare in the wilderness places for the woman. And so <laughs> it's like, it's like, um, yeah, you can't take things out of context. Is it good to share? We should all share, but just be careful not to like take one verse and then make your whole life, make everything squeeze through that. Okay, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple. See, we don't all sit in the temple all day, but we don't even have the temple anymore. And breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising Elohim and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church, but that word church is just ecclesia. That word is actually not even in the NU text there. But remember, the first time we ever see the word church used in scripture is in Exodus. It is the word ecclesia, and it just means gathering or group of people or mob. And so th th this is really sad because 
you're gonna see a place here where when um, when da -da -da -da, Stephen is addressing the the crowd, and he uses the same word they translate church every single other place, and for him they use the word congregation because it was in reference to Israel. They wanted to make a separation between the church and Israel, but there is no separation between the church and Israel. Like they're, they're not different. The group of God's children have always been the group of God's children. So you join to the Commonwealth of Israel. You don't get to start your own little club. <laughs> there was no Gentile club. There's no Gentile gate going into heaven. Does that make sense? Okay, I hope so. Okay, it's hard for me to understand why people would not want to be, I know, right? Isn't that amazing? Um, okay, chapter three. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Poor man hurting, crippled, whatever. He was lame, couldn't walk, asking for money. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Do you see they are still in the temple because the temple was still there? Do you understand that temple sacrifice and worship didn't stop because Jesus rose from the dead? It was another 70, it was 70 AD is when it was stopped. And it says in the book of Daniel, we were going to lose it because of our sin and transgression and that God was going to take it away to punish us. They still had it here. It wasn't the time of that punishment. It's very important to know, don't twist God's word. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gates of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So it'd be wrong to believe that my son, who is a pastor, is not being blessed by Yeshua because he keeps the Babylon way. My grandchildren are so faithful. You're right, Marie. I mean, God still loves his people. He still blesses even the wicked. We see King Ahab being helped in the Bible. And Ahab was extremely wicked and tried to kill Elijah, like him against Elijah. God is merciful and God is good even to the wicked. He's constantly trying to restore us to him. He's constantly trying to make ways for us to come back to him. Will he punish our lawless deeds? Does he discipline us? Absolutely. But he doesn't want to just sit there and hound on us he's constantly trying to save us constantly trying to save us so i can't you wouldn't say is your son choosing to be in the the curses yes that's his own choice if you obey god you're in the blessings if you disobey god you're in the curses that's your choice and god's going to have to have a righteous and just consequence for those actions but he is trying to help draw us through those bad actions to the place of obedience so he can bless us because he loves us so i hope that makes sense now, as a lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's Greatly Amazed. We just read about this on Sabbath. <clears throat> so when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do, you, why do you marvel at this? Or why do you look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? Did they go at that point start Peter's ministry? Um, who's with him? <laughs> who was there? John. Did they say, here's the ministry. Please donate to John and Peter's ministry. Like, we're going to start our own organization now. Start our own named group. Did they start building their kingdom? No, 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 no. They did it for the glory of God. They did it for the glory of God. They were called to do it. Take money out of the equation, you'll see who's called. <laughs> Take money out of the equation, you'll see who's called. Are they called or are they doing it because they want power? Hmm. Okay. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Yeshua, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life, whom Elohim raised from the dead, of which ye are witnesses. Of course, this was prophesied, right? The sons of those who pierced him will mourn when he returns. His brothers, the story of Joseph. When Yeshua came the first time, he was the Messiah ben Yosef, Messiah son of Joseph, the suffering servant who was rejected and hated by his brothers. The only brothers at this point who knew they were his brothers were the Jews, <laughs> right? He was born a Jew. The Jews were the southern kingdom of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The ten northern tribes were not returned. However, interesting that both houses had a part in killing him, right? The Romans who became the founder of the Catholic Church, and the Jews. Interesting. 
And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him his perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God has foretold by the mouth of all his prophets that the Messiah would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted. Why was he telling the Jews to repent? Because they were following the Talmud. They were adding to the laws of God, just like the Christians take away. Repent and be converted. Be born again. And did you know the Psalm says, the law of God is perfect, converting the soul. What converts the soul? The Torah, the teachings of God. Once you have faith in Jesus, it's the laws that you learn right and wrong that make you a new person. Because now I know, oops, I don't have sex outside of marriage anymore. Oh, I don't get drunk. I don't kill my brother. I don't steal. I don't murder. I don't lust for another. You get what I'm saying. So he said, goodness gracious, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So when the church teaches people not to repent, and just they say, just you can just keep sinning, they're taking that blessing from them. They're taking that blessing of refreshing from the people because you need to repent from your sins to be refreshed in God. When you stop sinning, there's a blessing and open arms of the God that leads you and holds you and forgives you and helps you. And that he, he may send you, okay, and that he may send Jesus Christ who has preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things. Ooh. What do I always talk about? The Bible is a story of restoration. He must restore the ten tribes of Israel. He must restore, restore, restore. He's going to restore his worship system. He's going to restore the, the throne to David. It's going to come back. He's going to restore the Levitical priesthood. We, we see that in Ezekiel chapter 44, 45, 46. He's a God of restoration. We mess it up. He comes and fixes it. He restores it through his grace and through his mercy. We lost, let's go back to this. The very first thing we did in the Garden of Eden is we lost our innocence. We brought in sin and we took, we lost the right to eat of the tree of life. He is restoring things to us so that we will have the right to eat of the tree of life again, according to Revelation 22, 14, if we keep his commandments. awesome okay 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 so whom heaven must re okay verse 21 chapter 3 verse 21 whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration that's now after the tribulation of all things that's where we're gonna have that seventh day rest the seventh period of a thousand years which is the millennial kingdom which God has spoken by the mouth of all his prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, Yahweh your Elohim will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. That was the prophecy Messiah. Remember, if you believed and followed the Torah, you're going to see the Messiah in the Torah. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And where he was going to be like Moses, he was going to teach the same rules, same laws, same everything. We just read that in Isaiah, even to the Gentiles. Isaiah 42, don't forget that one. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. How many people, John John's on here, I think, how many people argue with us and keep saying, Jesus did away with the law, or don't listen to Jesus, just listen to Paul. And it's like insane. I'm like, what are you talking about, don't listen to Jesus? He's the Messiah. Paul's nothing. Paul's not God. Jesus is God. Listen to what Yeshua said. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow as many as have spoken have also foretold these days. You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God raised up his servant Yeshua, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. And their iniquities, the greatest ones they were doing, was they had a heart that was not born again. They were living by the letter of the law, adding to it the Talmudic laws, and missing the whole heart of the Torah. Um, I saw in the scriptures that Yeshua redeemed us from the curse of the law. Yeah, the curse of the law, right? The curse. The law has blessings and curses. The curse of the law is the penalty for our sin. That he, the law itself is not the curse. Um, right. And, and so the, what he takes away in exactly, Dale, is that when we sin, if we repent, then he took that curse away from us. The law itself wasn't a curse. Um, 
Yeah, and you can't get the blessings if you're not walking in Torah. That's a good point. I hear that all the time. Closed-minded. Yeah, okay. We're on chapter four. Let me turn on my heater a little bit here. Does anybody have any questions? This is a good stopping point real fast. Oops, I hit that. Um, does anybody have any questions on those first three chapters? Please keep it pertinent to the first three chapters of Acts. Hold other questions to later or message me privately. Um, okay. We're going to keep going. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Yeshua the resurrection from the dead. Now, these Pharisees and Sadducees of yesterday are the Christians of today. <laughs> when we're speaking the truth of the Torah, this, this truth of this restoration that's coming, they're attacking us and they're, oh, they're angry. Why? Because they've built a system from which they make their livelihood that is contrary to the word of God. That's why prophets of God aren't supposed to be paid. Teachers of God aren't supposed to be paid. Why? Because we don't make our living off anything like this. We don't, we don't have anything to, we just are truth seekers. I don't have anything to defend. Okay. Okay. Great. Jeannie, much love to you. Have a blessed night. We'll watch it. Okay. Have a good night, Tristan. Have a blessed night. Going to bed. Okay. Heather, have a blessed night. Um, Thank you. And, oh, guys, bye. Heather Brenning has a YouTube channel too. Heather, will you link that in there? Because I couldn't even remember my YouTube channel. How am I going to remember yours? Um, the, the little link to it. Um, I just find it on there. <laughs> um, but Heather can link that. She has a good one about, um, it's been cool. Like, cause she's speaking up about obedience and stuff like that. Okay. Anyway. You see how these Sadducees and the religious people are disturbed. That's the only people who are going to get disturbed. If you have a construct built, a system built, if you have a religious organization built or whatever, you're going to get disturbed if you have something. But if you're just a truth seeker, you're like, well, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's see what God has to say. What does God have to say? Father God, teach us. Okay, so being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Yeshua the resurrection from the dead, and they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already even just arrested them. <laughs> However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about five thousand. You can't stop the word of God, even if you stop, if you try, even if you, you you can't stop the word of God. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, "By what power or by what name have you done this?" Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good day done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel, but that by the name of Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom Elohim raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. And they're being judged for doing a good work. <laughs> Isn't that how the religious people are? Oh my gosh. Like you can do something good, but you could tell them they're handsome and they're going to be mad at you, right? It's like you can't do anything right with a religious person because they're so blinded and they're so angry. They just have to defend the religious construct that they've made. So this is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Yeshua. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could, not, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no, one, no man in this name. <laughs> like, all these people see the miracles. We can't really, like, you know, we can't really come against it because this is obvious, but let's just, let's just threaten them. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all in the name of Yeshua. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. I just flipped to my page there. Okay, verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported to all the chief priests and elders had said, what? 
I'm sorry, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to Elohim with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that's in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took, the, um, took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Yahweh and against his Messiah. For truly against your holy servant Yeshua, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done to them. I want to point out here, I hear all the time, you Jews killed Jesus. Actually, the Romans did. The Gentiles did. The Jews delivered him up. The Gentiles killed him. Look right here, it says, Herod, Pontius Pilate, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel all gathered together to do it. Right? Okay, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Yeshua. And I pray that too, those of you who are trustworthy, who are not self-glorifying, I pray that Father blesses you with all that Holy Spirit, that you can just glorify his name. If you don't have a right heart, I pray, Father, get you that right heart, okay? And when they had prayed and the, um, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of Elohim with boldness. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Yeshua. And great grace was upon them all. <laughs> Father, give us all great grace to glorify your name. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked, for all who, were, all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. And Joseph, um, that says Joseph, who, were also, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, he was a Levite, a Jew, having, lay, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Okay, any questions? Uh, I just realized you're in Acts. I'm in Acts as well. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so you're not Seventh-day Adventist, are you? It's hard for people to understand because Seventh-day Adventist, okay. Okay, chapter five. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. So here's what we're seeing that he had chosen to lie about the amount he was given to the apostles. Now, those who say the wrath of God is no more, this is after Yeshua died and rose from the dead, we already saw that the disciples were still obeying the law of God. They were still going to Jerusalem for the Feast of um, Shavuot. They were still obeying the Torah. And right here, we're going to see that the wrath of God didn't end at the cross either. We're going to see something that shows, again, that proves the nature of sin didn't change at the, God, at the cross, and God didn't change. God never changes. He says, I'm not a man that I should change. It's the book of Malachi. So, so you have not lied to men, but to God. Verse 5. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. He, like, died. God killed him for lying. That's not even breaking the Sabbath. That's not even murder, nothing. He got killed for lying. Killed. You don't think God judges in the New Testament? That's huge. And the young man arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Now, it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. Second death for lying in the New Testament after Jesus died and rose from the dead. God didn't change. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. The God who says he's going to vomit out the lukewarm is the God who executes judge, judgment against the unrighteous, against the lawless. Okay, Dale. Oh, yeah, the Levites have land because they were given lands from every portion. Remember different tribes had cities they gave to the Levites. 
and Dale was probably putting that on there. So when they were first going to the land, the book of Joshua specifically goes through it, they would give them like this many cities from each tribe will give a certain number of cities to the Levites. And you could sell the land. The Levite could potentially sell that land through a, through a specific process and then go and serve in Jerusalem at, at the temple. Anyway, it, does, it could happen. Um, verse 12. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Now, I laid hands on so many people that were healed. We've, we've spoken in tongues a lot. There's many prophetic words we've had. If you are missing those gifts, I ask you to humble yourself before the Father. Get out of the Babylonian system. Get into a place of obedience where he can trust you with those gifts because that's what you're supposed to be doing. It says in, um, in the Gospels, it says those who believe in him will do those things. And if you're not, it's not that you just... Ha he needs to firm you up somewhere in your faith, and I pray he can. Um, okay. <clears throat> Verse 13, none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Notice they believed, they had faith. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. They were jealous. Because if they couldn't do this stuff of God, well, these people aren't of God, which they were of God. And so, but these people weren't being obedient to God. So, but at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. Isn't that beautiful? All the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the, shut, before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. And when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. Someone came and told them, saying, Look, the men who you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without, the, without violence, for they feared the people lest they should be stoned. Because, see, the people were listening. The people were supporting this person, these, um, the disciples. And so they had to be careful what they were doing. Like, just like, so I've been... <laughs> I've been treated very badly behind the scenes by other Christian pastors and people, but in front of people, they look, they look good because people listen. They know that what I'm speaking is the truth of God. And so, but these, the false pastors don't. And so they won't do it overtly. They'll come like behind the scenes and send me threatening messages. And I get all sorts of stuff like that. And I've had people like write me notes, like in letters to, <laughs> because they don't want to do it in public because they know that they'll get in trouble. But they don't want, so they don't want to do it publicly, which is interesting, huh? Um, and that's what's happening here. They're like, well, these people believe these guys. And I guess, what, like, they had enough common sense to know, like, what they were saying actually had to, like, line up with the truth somewhat. But in their hearts, they were so viciously angry and jealous that they still brought them secretly. Um, Verse 28, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. Again, they were they were um, threatened. They were accused of having a doctrine. They're just teaching the Bible. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The Elohim of our fathers raised up Yeshua, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him, God has... Notice it was a tree, not a cross. But I mean, you understood it was a cross. It was a cross stake, but don't put a cross in your home. <laughs> Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Repentance. Repentance came first and then forgiveness. You must repent from the lawless deeds and then you get forgiven for the lawless deeds. And we are his witnesses to these things and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Isn't that what happens? Like, if they can't beat you and, like, bully you spiritually, then they just want to bring you down and kill you spiritually. Then one of the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Thutis, 
Thutis, rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. So he's saying, and now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. So what? what he's wise. He's very wise, Gamaliel. In fact, many people think Paul was trained by him. He's like, if this is wrong and not of God, God will bring it down. It's going to come to nothing. Verse 39, but it is, if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. So he's like, be careful, because you're going to be found fighting against God if you're fighting that which is of God. So just let God take care of it. Let God take care of it. And they agreed with him, and when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, <laughs> and commanded them that they should speak, not speak in the name of Yeshua and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Have you rejoiced today in the persecutions from your family and loved ones? Have you rejoiced in being called names and a false prophet? And have you been, have you rejoiced? Have you rejoiced to suffer for his name's sake? And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Yeshua as the Messiah. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, questions at this point. Um, what was it about that situation that they died for lying? People lie against the Lord. Um, well, that's okay, Janelle. It's honestly just showing that the heart of God, he, know, he like still judges wickedness. And their hearts, I think it was deceptive in that they were trying to look righteous in God's eyes. I think people who try to look righteous, because they were saying, like, look, we sold our, they, they wanted, they were using, they were being deceitful in what they were pretending to give to God. And they were saying, we give the price at this full price of this land. And, and so they concocted some story, apparently. And, but for pretending to do something righteous that wasn't really righteous, God just judged it. And you're right. Like, lying seems like a minor thing, which we shouldn't lie. But you get what I'm saying. Like, of all the sins that were out there, this is the one that was chosen to be judged with death. But it wasn't the only one. This is why we often forget that when we're sick, when we have disease, when we have something happen to us, it is God's hand against us. It's that God says in the Bible multiple times, I am the God who strikes you and I am the God or afflicts you and I am the God who heals you. He teaches us. Paul was struck blind on the road to Damascus because he was fighting against God. Job was struck because of his faith in God. God allowed it to test his faith and to show how much he would endure for his name's sake. So who are we to fight God? Okay, chapter six. Was that? Okay. Now, in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against, uh, against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. So the Hellenists were those from Greek, and then um, this is a Greek-speaking Jew, and the Hebrews are like, hey, our widows are neglected. They don't have, like, we were supposed to be distributing to help the widows, and they don't have any food or whatever. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the, multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over the business. Right? Everybody has a different place in the body. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, I probably butchered that name, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. The first believers, people miss this all the time, were still Jews. This great number of first believers were Jews. They were rejecting Judaism, and they were just following the Torah. You're going to read soon, that, and not, the, not that bad Ananias that we just read about, the other Ananias was the man sent to Paul to give him his sight. Ananias, this is a man devout according to the law. Verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freedmen, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and those from Cilician Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. <laughs> Since you could, they couldn't beat him down with their words, then they what? They secretly 
induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. He didn't speak against Moses and God. He, which Okay, so the secret men that were lying were saying falsely, false accusing him of speaking against Moses and God. That proves that he taught to obey Moses because the liars were saying that he taught against Moses. So the truth, the cop opposite of the truth, okay, so here's the lie. Oh, he's speaking against Moses. The truth is he did not speak against Moses. The lie was he spoke against God. The truth was he didn't speak against God. He was still teaching Yahweh's Torah and obedience. How does the Hebrew? Well, we'll have to get to that. Um, let me get through this and then maybe we can go see. We'll find that, pull that up. Um, okay. And they stood up the people, the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him and brought him to the council. They also set up false, false, not true witnesses who said this man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against his holy place in the law. The false witnesses said Stephen spoke against the law. Opposite of false is true. So if the false witnesses said he spoke against the law, the truth would be that he spoke to obey the law. For we have heard him say that this Yeshua of Nazareth will destroy this place and change. This is the false accusation. Please get, please understand this. For we have heard him say that this Yeshua of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. Do you understand that was a false accusation? The false accusation was that Stephen was saying that Jesus would change the laws of Moses. That was a false accusation. Acts 21, Paul had to go prove himself that he walked orderly and obeyed the law. The false accusation was that Stephen said to Again, anything against the laws of Moses that they would change. So the truth was that he was speaking that they were saying they would never change. Do you see this? Do you see that? And all who sat in the council looked steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. Now, going back to um, the Hebrew Bible. Um, so you're asking about verse 30. I'm assuming in verse chapter 5. Um, let's see here. Mm. Oh, hanging on the tree. This isn't written in Hebrew. Well, there is... So in Greek, right here, what we can look at, um, we can look, it's the word tree. It's the word tree in Greek. It's Zulon. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that in Greek. Let me see here. Um, yeah, Zulon. Sorry, I said it wrong. It's wood. It says wood or a tree. So that's, there you go. That answers that, sweetie. That was in the Greek, not the Hebrew. Um, okay, now we're in chapter seven. You guys doing Okay. Yahweh allowed Satan to afflict me with his pain, but I repent of it. Okay. Sometimes there's a consequence, like God just chose to let Paul have a thorn in his side to humble him. I know that I have certain things like that because one of the things the Father told me when I first came to Torah, yeah, the amount of revelation and stuff he gives me, he has certain things where even, you can ask Morgan, I'm if I mess up even the slightest, like the smallest thing, God is really hard on me because um, he gives me so much revelation and understanding and the spirit, and I, I can't do that. He's harder on me than a lot of people. Um, but that's okay because I need to, if I'm, if I have, if I have it in my bag, I better use it, right? So if I understand and I, you know, I can't, there's just things that he, sometimes that we have to have a thorn in our flesh just to really keep us humble because we're nothing. And we have to remember that. That's why we don't build our own organizations or systems or anything because we need, everybody needs to know that I'm nothing. That everything I do is God gave me the gifts I could have for his kingdom, not for me. So don't think I'm anything. And so that might be with you, Marie, because you seem to have a strong calling. Your family has, you probably are Levites if you were pastors and teachers. And so sometimes he really puts things heavy on us. And if we have messed up, sometimes we do have consequences, um, eternal consequences to help others to learn from our mistakes, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, you're right. That's okay. Heather, no problem, sweetie. I know this is Shalom. Good night, everybody. I love you guys. Um, yeah, the more we know, the more we're accountable. And it's more even than just that. It's like the 10 talents. You have 10 talents, you better bring home 20. <laughs> if you have one talent, be faithful with what you have. If you have 10, you have to be faithful. So 
I remember one time this person was being so nasty to me, so nasty, had been pushing me for weeks. And I don't, it takes so much for me to lose my temper like that. The person was mean to me and mean to me and mean to me, just being nasty. And finally I snapped one day and I got a sore, like on my lip or something, or my tooth or something. And I was like, Father, like, did you see this person pushing me? I mean, I, first of all, I said, sorry. I said, I'm so sorry, Father God, please forgive me. I'm like, but did you like, like not see this person? Like pushing me for weeks now. And you know what God said to me? Yeah, but he can't see and you can. You can see. You see. Be patient. You lost your patience with him. He is wrong and I'm going to deal with him. But you understand. He doesn't understand. And I was like, you're right, Lord. You're right. And so that's where you just really have to, if you have the understanding, if you're the bigger one, for example, if your spouse is being evil, but you understand the Torah and you know that you're supposed to be loving, forgiving, and merciful, you got to do what's right no matter what anybody else does. You don't get an out to sin because they did it. Well, they did it first. And God's like, I don't care. I don't care. You knew better. You know what to do. And so that's where you learn your walk is so individual in that respect that you are, you need to just perfectly walk with your God in the fullness of his spirit at all times. Is everybody too tired? I see a few people dropping off here saying they're going to bed. Do you want to stop or do you want to go more? Because we can, what I was thinking... I may be able to continue this tomorrow night because I think the book of Acts is important for us to go through, especially because I'm getting lots of questions on it. Um, would you like to continue tonight a little bit longer? So how about write in the comments if you want to keep going tonight or if you want to wait until tomorrow. Okay, Rachel says let's go more. So I got one. <laughs> Gabriela says can we stop? Now, for those of you who want to stop, Remember, this will all be on the page. Um, okay, so everybody's most, okay. I'll always say go. I know that's how I am, RJ. That's how I am, Rachel. Um, I'm just going to see the majority. We're getting a lot here tomorrow. Okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> then we got another tonight. But because, because there are a lot of tomorrows of you people who are here frequently, I am going to stop it just for that sake because I, I, there's a lot of you that I know are frequent listeners um no problem Janelle um and we'll try I'm gonna try what's my day tomorrow I have should we try for 6 p.m tomorrow night mountain standard time mountain standard time we'll try for six if I am a half hour late because like tonight by the time I, I knew I had to go 6.30 tonight to get my husband's dinner ready. Um, did I miss any, or did you say not to have a cross yet? Um, so, yes, yeah, so we should definitely not have a cross. The modern cross is actually a lot of people worship it. And it has become, so it's kind of like the, um, where we had in the wilderness, we had the cross stake with the snake on it. And then God had to make them destroy it because they started worshiping it. What's happened is in a, the modern cross is based on the Mithra cross, who was an Egyptian god. And so, it's not, and so then it's like this weird thing. And they're like, oh, I got the cross. It's like a good luck charm almost. And I hate the word luck. But you, that's kind of what they're using it for. So Father always told me not to have a cross. We, we just don't have crosses. He died on a cross beam, which is more like a stake. But I give people lots of grace too as they're learning. And, and remember, God does too. He helps us. But there are things he wants us to come into alignment with and understand. Now, let's do a question and answer for those of you who need to go tonight, night, bed. Great, you can get off. Those of you who now have some questions, this would be a good time to ask them. I'm just trying to put this on. Sorry, I'm trying to do this. This is a good time to ask. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people idolize it. I think some people don't understand. Like I said, it's, yeah, Star of David's definitely wrong. That's um, named, it's in the Bible in Amos. It talks about that star. Um, I work tomorrow night, so I'll have to catch the video. Okay, um, we always want to hear more. I'm trying. So let's do it tomorrow night too. This week will be, I know we got to get through the book of Acts. I really feel that. And then we left off in Ezekiel. <laughs> we still have a few chapters to do on that. But we got through a lot of good part of Ezekiel. The part where it talks about the whole prophecy of the Holy Spirit coming would be to write the, give us a new heart to keep his statutes and his laws. <laughs> so those of you who didn't catch the Ezekiel studies on our lives, you have plenty of information. If you want more tonight, go back and watch those. Um, Ezekiel is so clear that when the new covenant comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, that the Holy Spirit was going to teach us to keep the laws, to keep his statutes. That was the whole thing. He's going to give us a new heart to do that. Um, the fat of the land, 
what time would it be central time? So you're one hour ahead of me. So 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time would be 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, awesome. Being towards to be 7 Central. Thank you, Amber. Um, and Cassandra, that's good. I'm glad you got to see that, sweetie. Now, I did miss back here to what... Hi, Nancy. Didn't see that. Um... Okay, I just want to make sure. I'm going back to kind of the beginning for a minute, guys. So I'm just going to scroll for a minute here and just make sure I didn't miss anything because I think I did. Okay, I prayed for that. I keep praying for healing. Okay, so Michaela, that's awesome. Okay. Okay, just going here. Um. Wait, did I just miss that? Did I miss this comment? Sorry, guys. Um, yeah. And Anna, just so you know, too, if you, I don't know if you're still on. She might have got off. Um, Anna Marie Dover. Um, I am willing to always do FaceTimes with pastors and lives. Um, I'm not afraid of anybody. I've met face-to-face -face with so many. I challenged somebody the other day. They're like, they were like something. I was like, bring it. <laughs> I'll do a live. I'll do a live, like, let's go. Like, the wisdom of God is so powerful. You can't put it down. So if anybody ever wants to do, like, schedule a time with me, like, to do a FaceTime call or something um, with your pastor or whatever sitting there, I don't run from that. I'm glad I've met with hundreds of pastors. So I'm, I've met with lots and lots and lots of people. So um, I am not afraid of anybody. Just my God. Um made it yay liver so i'm sorry i just saw this question liver is it kosher yeah it technically is kosher but i it's like the detox center of the body i'm not doing it <laughs> um um praying for you okay okay there we go um, yes, I pray that Kimberly get clarity from God. Um, sorry guys, as you're watching my big old nose here, as I'm just trying to make sure that I'm catching the comments and the questions and that we got the verses. I just, it's, it's better for me to wait till the end so that I'm like, cause otherwise I get like off. Um. Okay. Well, Laura, I'm so sorry. Thank you. I'm glad he helped you with that patience test. Um, I'm glad he helped you there. Okay. Morgan got on. Okay, Janie. Okay, so then I think... Um, oh! So you can eat meat. You definitely don't have to be a vegan. I'm sorry, Bridget. I don't even know if you're still on. Um... But you can eat meat. In fact, we just, uh, Deuteronomy. Mm. Oh, Carissa, what verse did you send me earlier? Is it Deuteronomy 12 or Deuteronomy 20? Um, we were talking about that earlier. You can eat meat within your gates. The unclean and the clean person can eat it. Um, it was is your gates. But if it was supposed to be an offering to God, then it had to go to the temple the Jerusalem, uh, at Jerusalem to be offered just there at the sacrifices. But meat's okay. Um, it's just meat. Like, not people, not horses not pigs. <laughs> meat is food. It's all hell. Not all flesh is clean. So meat's fine. Seventh-day Adventists don't burn out Seventh-day Adventists, but, um, and some of them do it anyway. So they don't really hold to that LNG white lady stuff, but it's fine to eat meat. In fact, the sacrifices are meat. So if you're going to partake in Passover ever, when we have the temple, you can't do the Passover in your own gates. It says you can't eat Passover in your homes. It says Deuteronomy 16. Uh, we're going to be eating lamb, so there won't be any vegans in that kingdom, <laughs> will there? Uh, um, um, interesting. Um, okay, Acts one twenty. Read it once in clean animals. Okay, we are commanded to eat the Passover lamb. Okay. Okay. I okay. Now my brain's frying, guys. My brain's a little frying. I'm going to come down here. Do we have any other questions? Thought the organ meats were God's portion. So the fat around them and the kidneys. And I just read that in X. Hmm. I was just reading it somewhere today or yesterday. But yeah. Um, 
it, it doesn't say like the heart or the, it, the some of the offal, but the stuff that belonged to God was the choice fat and the fat around the kid, the fatty lobe around the liver and the kidneys and the kidneys. That's what I read. Um, but I just, you know what? I don't need the organ meat. I, I just rather go hungry. <laughs> uh, but Paul was able to continue preaching. I've been shut down. You've been shut down? Okay, and I don't know who Robert Breaker is, um, but anytime I would, I'm, I'm open to anything anybody wants to do like that. I've met with so many people that never lost a debate yet, praise God, <laughs> with the Torah, because you just can't refute the truth of God. It's so powerful. Um, and then the theological gymnastics has a stopping point at some point where they just can't defend their lawlessness anymore. So I don't know who Robert Breaker is, but that'd be cool if he wants to. And the thorn and Paul's sent above him. Yeah, and it says that he submitted to it. He pleaded with God, please heal me. And God said, no. And it literally says in the scripture, Paul himself says it was to humble him because of the amount of revelation he had. And I've been told that by God at times. Like, because he's like, I just need you to remember, you know, because you do get a lot of revelation, Mel, and I do speak in your ear. I need you to, you know, but just remember, we, we are nothing. We're nothing. If God chooses to give me one talent or ten talents, who am I? You know what I mean? We're just nothing. It's all about him. Oh, awesome, Dale. I'm glad God told you that. Where is it on the Star of David? It's in the book of Micah. I just, oh, I posted it to somebody today, but it's in the book of Micah. You can find it. Type in the word star in Blue Little Bible Carry on your BLB and, and you'll find it. Yes. Okay, so Rachel. That was a good question, sweetie. So when you were in Egypt and you were yucky and horrible, like let's take my life. Smoking like a fiend, cussing like a fiend, drinking like a fiend, um, dressing like, oh my gosh, on the corner. I could be a corner trickster. Who just, you know what I mean? Being immodest, immoral, horrible, anger-filled heart, all these things. I mean, maybe it wouldn't have looked like that maybe to the world, but I know. But the other things were pretty obvious. He came and said, hey, I want you. I love you. And then he covered me with the blood. And then he said, hey, let's go to the mountain to learn the commandments. You aren't going to change overnight with everything. It's a process. And just as a child goes from infancy to toddler to teenager, which that's a horrible stage, to adult or to young adult to adult to middle-aged adult to old we as humans spiritually progress in the same way. God didn't expect a two-year-old to know what an eight-year-old knows. He understands you have a time frame of life to work out. You are expected to be faithful with the amount of information you know and understand at the time. You are expected not to purposefully sin willfully but you're still saved from eternal damnation as long as you continue to stay with him and try. He loves you. He adores you. His purpose is he is attempting to save you from all the sins in your life, but you are saved from eternal damnation when you call on the name of Yahweh and accept that. And then you leave Egypt and you start learning his ways. None of us are perfect. We're trying, it says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. But absolutely, you are saved from eternal damnation even while he's working on you because none of us changed overnight. It's not an instant process. And he even says in the book of Acts 15, start with the four laws from the heart of Torah and then they'll learn the rest of the laws of Moses on the Sabbath. So don't give up. Don't feel condemned. Every time you mess up, you just say, you know what? I got another breath. I ain't losing. I'm getting back up. I got up off my butt. I got knocked down once, but I'm getting back up and I'm going to try again. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best. You can do it. He won't give up on you. He won't. Um, so, Marie, the book of Matthew has it messed up because it talks about a, it, the timeline gets all messed up. You go to the book of Jan John. He is talking about the Last Supper. He's talking about the breaking of bread and institutions. You, do that. you couldn't eat the Passover in your own room. That was like 
impossible. Like you had to eat the Passover in the temple. It was a holy offering. You had to be cleansed to take of it, partake of it. You were in the temple. So Matthew gets confused because it looks like there's three different times to eat the Passover that year. <laughs> it's like you don't eat the Passover over three different nights. Uh, Matthew gets all messed up on the timeline because of the translators. Matthew wasn't messed up. The translators didn't understand things. Um, the book of John does it really clearly delineated for the timeline. And so you don't eat the Passover in your own gaze. That's Deuteronomy 16. You don't eat that sacrifice in your gaze. It was, you had to be cleansed a specific way. In fact, in the book of John, it says that, okay, so Yeshua, they had supper that night, which wasn't Passover. They had supper that night. They go out to the garden. He gets arrested. In the next morning, it literally says they had not yet done the Passover yet. It says because the Jews didn't go into the praetorium, lest they be defiled so they couldn't eat the Passover that night right? Because the Passover happens at the end of the 14th day. Yeshua and his disciples, there's a misunderstanding in the book of um, Matthew. It says, go prepare the Passover. You couldn't prepare the Passover in your room. That, that's not, that's the reason they went to Jerusalem is because the Passover was done in the temple courtyards. And then, then it says like a couple chapters later, like, oh, then they had the Passover. Well, ha they couldn't have the Passover two or three different times. And so that was a misunderstanding by the translators who didn't understand the Passover because they were antinomians trying to impose an antinomian logic sense space on Hebrew process that they didn't understand, a biblical process. Um, hi, I missed your lives. It's been a while since I helped you. Oh, awesome, Jason. Shalom, shalom, brother. Um, would you say it's a good idea? Right. I would not ever have lamb. Yahweh told me not to have lamb at Passover because then we, we start to think, oh, I'm doing the Passover, but that's not. The Passover is an actual sacrifice. He, he tells us in Zephaniah 3.18, those who mourn for the feast will return. Well, the reason we're mourning is because we've lost it. We got sent into exile. You read in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah I don't know why I said that so fast, Nehemiah and Ezra, and we just, I pointed out the other night in Chronicles, they did not do that Passover outside of Jerusalem and they didn't do it while in exile. They waited till they returned. So there's a commandment that says, don't do it in your gates. So if you do it and you're calling it the Passover, then you're going to be in trouble. You're going to get spanking. One person did it. She didn't listen to me. And she had the most horrible headache that night. And she blamed me. And I said, I never prayed one bad thing for you. I'm not the kind of person who's going to pray anything bad for you. I don't pray like God judge them. I, in fact, that night, the funniest thing was, I hadn't even remembered to pray for her at all. Like, I didn't pray that God would teach her or help her or anything. I just didn't even think of her. And then she comes to me the next day and blames me that she was so sick she couldn't do the Passover. I said, no, I didn't even, like, all I would have prayed was God just love you, help you, and show you his truth. I never would have prayed for anything bad to happen to you because then I'll be judged. Like, I ain't doing that. But... I thought it was interesting that God had like literally blocked her so much from my mind. I hadn't even thought of praying for her so that I couldn't even be falsely accused of that. Cause like, like I can say I'm totally blameless before God cause I hadn't even thought of praying for her, which then I felt bad. I'm like, boy, I should have probably prayed for her. But, um, I just forgot about it. Um, you said something about makeup is a sin. So the father told me not to wear makeup. Um, everybody I know that's come to Torah gets makeup removed from their life because it's fake, it's vanity, it's not of God. It, it's, um, it's just not the essence in the, we can see that's not in his nature. And it's meant usually, if you think about it, women get to wear it when they're of age, like to allure a man. We're not supposed to be focused on our own vanity or our own outward appearance. We're supposed to be focused on how Christ looks through us, how Messiah looks through us. We don't wanna look like the world. Well, the world does makeup. We're supposed to be wholly set apart different. We're supposed to be natural, pure, how God made us. We should be kept and holy and clean. But makeup really was meant to attract men. And we're not supposed to be stumbling blocks to others. And our attraction should come from a pure and holy spirit. So the Father, everybody I know, like thousands of people that I know, have all always been told to stop. Because it's just not this. We aren't supposed to exude sexuality. We're supposed to. That's for our husband. The bed is undefiled between the husband and wife. You do your pure things in there. You can be together. You can be intimate. You can be sexy. You can do all that together. My body is hidden. When I go to the gym, when I'm here, I nobody knows what my body looks like but my husband or girls in the locker room. I don't paint myself up to like, look how pretty I am. Look how gorgeous I am. Do my hair. I don't do that stuff because the fathers told me not to. And... It's just you can see the heart of the Spirit of God in it is that He just wants us humble and pure. And so I, if you need help or, or to be prayed for, definitely I'll pray for you, sweetie. Um, so 
the Passover and she, okay, I read in Leviticus, God did tell me he would heal me, but I don't know if it will be him. Well, I'll keep praying, Marie, and I'm praying for you, Father God, I beg you, thank you, Lord, that you are the healer, and I know you will heal her too. I believe it, Father God. If it could be now that you would bring healing to her body, Father God, would you please grant your servant Marie mercies of healing right now for your glory? Oh, Father God, we ask you begging, believing and trusting in your time, in your name. But we believe in you, Lord. No doctors, no medicine, no nothing. We know you are the healer. Please heal her according to your word. And if it would be now, please grant that mercy now. In the name of Yeshua, we ask. Amen. Um, I see it as a marathon, not a sprint. You got it. Um, so what did Yeshua mean to do this? Remember? The breaking of bread. It was literally his supper. He took bread, which was leavened, probably, because it wasn't the unleavened bread yet, and wine. None of that was a part of the Passover feast anyway. Unleavened bread is, not regular leavened bread. And he just said, I'm going to break my... He was telling his disciples, look, I am going to be broken like bread and poured like wine for you. Please do this in remembrance of me. Because he was telling them, you're also going to lay down your life for those around you. In fact, when I'm going to be going through things, when I am going through things, you know what Yahweh has me do? Take bread and break it. And remember that I'm to be poured out and broken. I'm to be poured out like wine and broken like a bread like he was. It's not Passover. It's like communion is what it's called. You can do it anytime. That's why churches do it all the time. They understood it wasn't Passover. They just did it. Churches do that regularly. At least my church did growing up. It's a good thing to do as a body when you come together to break bread. In fact, Paul says they were doing it all the time. Like he was talking about, you all come together and you break bread and and they were breaking it in remembrance of the Lord, but if you did it with an impure heart, you were judged. So remember, that wasn't Passover. That was the Last Supper. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I don't do hair dye or nothing. God told me not. See, I've got my grades up there. God told me no. 20-some years ago, I stopped all of it. He said, no fake. You are who? He goes, you don't teach these young women that they're not enough, that they're not beautiful till they're fake. He goes, nothing's fake. He goes, I'm not fake. I'm real. I'm pure. So I try to do that. Um... I do some natural looking makeup for my wedding. Um, so Cassandra, I didn't do any. When I did our ten year wedding renewals, there was God said no, none. And so He's always told me none. In fact, right when I came, when He told me about no makeup back in two thousand four, because I came anyway in Florida. I was in Florida. Um, he really convicted me because I hear the voice of God, and He's so close to me, and I feel like we do walk together. Like since I was seven years old, He put that verse on my Bible. I do feel like we walk together. And when he withdraws from me, I feel it. And somebody had mentioned something about makeup to me, and I was getting convicted. But I was like, well, I'm not doing it to be sexy and blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, he was gone. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what did I do? <laughs> oh, Father, what am I fighting you on? And he told me, as soon as I repented, he gave me full understanding. I could just see that he didn't, I could just see. He just gave me full understanding. It's like, okay. Thank you, Father, I submit. And then he was right back with me. By the way, Cassandra, I know a photographer. <laughs> I would love to come back to Florida. We used to live in Florida. I used to live in um, Palm Bay, right by Melbourne, Cocoa Beach there. Um, we were like 30 minutes from Cocoa Beach. For, um, for Canaveral, uh, we, Cape Canaveral, we would just watch the rockets launch from our backyard. It was really cool. Um, but if you need a photographer... <laughs> Hey, I know one. <laughs> um, I just don't work on Sabbath. Um, is it required to break bread? It's not required. When we do it, we do it in remembrance of him. And it's a really good practice, especially when you're, if you're in a prideful area of your life and you're going through something where somebody's hurting you, being mean to you, take that bread and say, no, I will be broken like bread for this person. I will not be prideful. I will not be defensive. I will not be, I will not be angry. I will not be self seeking in this father god i will lay down my life for this person it's a really good thing to do um so communion is right to do is that good yeah communion is good you can do it with any of the bread because i don't but whatever you have <laughs> um yes you pray about it sweetie and i had to pray about it with the makeup thing and like i said he withdrew from me and then as soon as i submitted he was right there and i was like thank you lord and honestly People look so much better without makeup. Like I've, when, when you stop wearing makeup, well, even before, before, when I used to wear, I only wore a tiny bit of makeup anyway, because I always thought makeup looked kind of, most of it looked kind of 
clownish. I'm not in a mean, I don't mean to put anybody down. I just didn't like it. And I would always look at the people, the women without makeup, and I thought, wow, they're so pretty. I always thought they were the prettiest girls. And then when he told me to stop wearing it, people would say that to me, like, okay, please don't think, because I, I, I don't think I'm pretty. I feel like very ugly all the time. I have a very low self-esteem in there. But people would tell me they thought I was pretty, and I'd be like, <laughs> what? And, um, um, but it was like, I just always thought the people without makeup were prettier. I just never liked makeup and these eyelashes to now, you girls, I don't know what is up with that. Like, I've, like, that's insane to me. <laughs> um, can we break bread alone? Yes, you can definitely do it alone. You can get baptized alone, like we said. You can do so much. Elijah was alone, but because you're not alone, you have God. Um, it's a good thing to do. Well, I want to focus on being beautiful inside. I know that I'm not going to be beautiful outside, but that's okay. I just want, I just want Yahweh to be glorified. And I have so much, oh, to work on. Like, like, I just always want to be just pure hearted all the time. And I have a pretty pure heart, but I don't want even like little things to frustrate me. Like the other day, let me tell you my story of this winter storm. <laughs> I haven't talked about it because I didn't want to get frustrated, but I was praying through it. So. It was so cold, like minus 50 with wind chill, that I have a water hydrant by the cow tank, and I went to put on my brand new $50 hose, snapped. No water in it, I drained it well. You could see it was perfectly empty of water. The rubber was so brittle on this new thing, it snapped. So then I'm like, oh, then I have to carry buckets. Well, I'm thinking, okay, it's like 150, 120 feet. No big deal, well, maybe 100 feet. I gotta carry buckets, no big deal. Probably not even 100 feet right there. Right? Being positive, I'm like, okay, no big deal, no big deal. Staying positive, and I'm hurting. Like, my fingers feel like if you touch them, they were going to snap off. It was minus 50 degrees. I'm not even exaggerating. It hurt so bad. Well, it was minus 30 with the wind chill of, like, minus 50. It hurt. I was, like, crying almost. Like, well, I was crying, but my eyes, because my eyes were sealed shut. I'm not even joking. So the eyelashes were sealed shut. I couldn't get my eyes open. The hose broke. It's minus 50. You have no idea how cold that is unless you've been in it with wind chill. And then I'm like, okay, I'll carry buckets. Oh, oh, right. We would think that because that's not a big deal. You got 40 pounds on this arm, 40 pounds on this arm. You're fine. No, the hydrant froze. So then I didn't just have to haul water from the hydrant of like 100 feet. I had to go all the way down the hill in snowstorm in ice cold. I had to carry, if you know, cows drink like 30 gallons of water a day per cow. I have six. Do the math. Do the math. And they probably didn't drink so, so much as much. I had to carry two buckets. So 40 pounds on each arm. <laughs> and they only carry, well, I probably put like four gallons in each. And I had to do that three times a day from the bottom of the hill all the way to the top from the bottom of the hill where the thing is. And so the whole time, rather than being frustrated, I had to say, I praise you, Father God. You are good. You are merciful. You are loving. I love you so much, Father God. I love you so much, Father God. I had to do that the whole time. I had to do that because I was hurting. It was cold. It was, I was struggling mentally because I wanted to just sell the farm keeping animals alive in snowstorms is not easy. But I said, no, 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 I will overcome. I will rejoice. So that's my, where I felt my heart was being impure because I was being, I was struggling to be frustrated and complain. I'm like, no, I'm not going to complain. This is a first world problem. This is a first world problem. I am clothed. I am fed. I can go inside for a minute or two to warm my hands if I need. I can do it. It's okay. And then I would get through it. One time I did do the warrior cry. I was just like, ah, <laughs> psyching myself up. Not like in, not in meanness, but I was just, I mean, my arms hurt so bad. I carried buckets of water, 40, like, so 80 pounds at a time. I barely weigh a hundred pounds. If those of you who know me, I'm very, I'm tall, but tiny. I'm carrying 80 pounds of water in ice cold minus 50s with wind chill up hill 
a very long way <laughs> to the trough. Oh, it was just like, <laughs> yeah, it just, it wouldn't work. Right now it worked today. Praise God. I prayed so hard. I was this morning. It didn't. So in the middle of the, in, when it was dark, I had to fumble around. But then at noon, we got up to 18 degrees and the water worked again. I was so thankful. I was so thankful. So those are the challenges. Those are my things. Um, I'm going to love everybody, forgive everybody, want the best for everybody. I'm not going to curse anybody. I'm not going to be. Um, I can get hurt feelings. And that's a struggle because I love so deeply that people hurt me. Because I, like, I invest so much in people. So then I do get hurt feelings. I have to admit that. But, but I don't want anything bad for them. I'm not a vengeful person, but I do get hurt. And then I will protect myself or get guarded. So those are my little things I got to work on. So everybody has their own things is all I'm saying. I know. Thank God I didn't fall to see. Oh, I had to use the one by the greenhouse because the one by the chicken coop is also frozen. So that one I had to do. But I had to go all the way down to the greenhouse and walk all the way up that hill. It was just insane that's the main hydrant there um um i am so yeah okay any other so we can't use a spigot on our house when it's cold um you're not supposed to ever wedding rings so carrie one of the things i prayed about the father because a lot of people say well the tradition on the left hand was um, this, the a pagan thing and it went to, you know, it was supposed to symbolize it went to the heart. I prayed about it because I said, Lord, you know, I've given up everything for you. <laughs> I gave up my career the day he told me to stop teaching at the college. I gave it like I, that next day I put in my notice the next day. He told me to stop doing birthdays. I gave it up. He told me to stop the pagan holidays. Nothing was a challenge for me. I just, once I, the birthdays and the makeup were the only two that I had been like, eh. Like, I wasn't sure about, but then when he made it clear, I just, like, gave it up. With the wedding ring, I said, Father God, I want a sign to the world that I'm married. And I don't, it doesn't have to be this, per se, but is this wrong? Is it sinful? And in the dreams and stuff he gave me, he shown, he's always put on my heart that it was okay. Because it's a vow, it's a sign to me that I honor the man to whom I made a vow to. And... I want men to know that because I do catch even at the gym, like people looking to see if I have a ring and I'm just like, I flash it. I'm just like, you know, um, and I want people to know, like, I don't give off a vibe at all of flirtation. I do not give up the vibe. I don't give off a vibe. I am so faithful to my husband, but I really want them to see like I'm married. Like, don't, don't even think that like, but so when I prayed about it, because the Bible talks about Cyrus was God's signet ring or God's Cyrus was the ring. He gave Cyrus a ring. Remember that side, the whole story. Anyway, God gave him the ring and he showed me other places in scripture where rings were okay. And so he has allowed it. He told me because I want it to do to honor my husband and, and he's always spoken to me that it was okay. Um, I understand some people don't do it, but he's always told me it's fine. And I go with what he tells me. Um, but I did go to him and I'm like, you know, Lord, I give you everything. <laughs> I give you everything. I give you my health. I give you everything. Um, oh, praise Yahweh, Jenny. Plus you're beautiful. You don't need that. You don't need that. And nobody ever said some girl looks cute with big lashes. You're beautiful. <laughs> You're so, probably so much more beautiful now. Um, well, you know, I don't think I'm pretty, but I just think that um, I just want to glorify God. That's all I want. Um, I got a tip on Facebook to use a crock pot in the chicken coop on warm. Oh, that's interesting. I have a, I put, um, I do the heat lamps. I have a heat lamp down there and our chicken coop is super insulated. I have a, you know, husband who is a general contractor and of course, like we, you know, he's pretty gimped up and, and, um, hurting now, but man, he built that chicken coop to last and it is the Taj Mahal, whatever that means. Yeah. Some, you can, um, 
Oh, the, the crock pot can start a fire. So Miranda, there's no commandment to cover your hair. Um, we went, we've, we've gone through that a, a good a few times. That's a good question. Um, Paul says very specifically in Corinthians, if you know no other, if you argue with this, we know no other way. Now, Paul is very feisty. And anything that he knew was a commandment of God, he says, if they don't agree with this letter, put them out. Don't eat with them. Don't even meet with them. They're whatever. Specifically on hair coverings, he says, it's a tradition. And if anybody argues, we just know no other way. And it was a tradition. The only thing that Torah says is if a woman is suspected of being an adulteress, then she must come and uncover her head. They covered their hair because they didn't wash their hair like we do. And if you're like I, when I'm in the field, I cover my hair. The reason being, it's dirty. I'm out there in the dirt and it's blowing. And I'm out there like eight to 10 hours sometimes of a day and it's filled with dirt. Well, if I don't have the ability or want to wash my hair every day, you cover it. That's why they covered it. Um, <clears throat> some people try to say it was the authority of the angels and stuff like that. Honestly, it there's no commandment to do it. There's no commandment to do it. And it's even Paul says in Corinthians, it's a tradition. So it's not wrong if you want to do it. But most of the women that I have known that covered their hair are very rebellious spiritually. I have not yet met one. And, and, and I'm not saying some of you might be there and I haven't met you. I have not met one who is not in a spirit of religiosity. I haven't met one who's truly born again and just filled with the Holy Spirit and functioning in the Spirit. So I don't know. I don't know. If, you know, if that's out there, there might be somebody who is. But I've met a, I mean, I've been in Torah movement for 22 years. And I have never met one. The people that I know that are spirit-filled and I see like laying the hands in people and speaking in tongues or are having prophetic dreams and are so humble, never cover their hair. And so I know Yahweh told me I don't have to cover it, but I do cover it sometimes when I'm outside. So I would just say do what Yahweh leads you to do. Just make sure you do humility. Just be humble. That's, all, that's what God wants, a pure and humble heart more than anything because a lot of people do it to look religious and I'm not even joking because they'll paint their face with makeup not trying at all to be modest and then wear a head covering it's like you kind of miss the whole idea if you're supposed to be you know what I mean it's like you're drawing all this attention to you here and you're trying to cover your hair is like they'll like come on um well that part even Paul says for a man if he prophesies with his head covered, it's a sin, but that's that's not true because the Levites had head coverings. So we can understand that it was something they were talking about different there, and it seems like hair, because it says your hair is given for your covering in that same passage in Corinthians. Um, and it literally says that it's um, wrong for, it's um, um, not wrong, um, oh gosh, disgraceful for a man to pray with his head covered, but that's ridiculous because the Levites, the priests, were commanded to cover their hair. So we can see that there's something with the translation or something that was being written that was just off because there's no commandment for a woman to cover her hair and there's no commandment for a man not to cover it. And it's not disgraceful. The priest says a beautiful thing that the Levites were told to wear the, the turbans and the crowns. Does that make sense? Um, right. And so Mary, if he, Marie, if he tells you that, that's great. Um, I keep my hair short because it's so thin. Well, and in Francis, that can be a sign of your husband, spiritual covering too. Sometimes... Like often what women don't understand is that their hair, your hair is representative of your covering, spiritual and or husband. So God cover how, like maybe you're spiritually thin somewhere, but it could also be your husband is trying to pray for him. So there's a lot of things with that. But I never judge them. If you feel the cover, like if you feel the cover of your head, then do it. I have had times where, where I was sent with a prayer shawl to a meeting um, all I'm talking about is the women who like, but I, they always, like, they cover all the time and they're very judgmental about it and they'll only wear skirts. Well, I know when I'm set in trusses with my husband, you don't want me in a skirt. First of all, I'm going to die. And I'm working on that tractor. I'm not wearing a skirt. And God told me not to. He gave me so many dreams. He gave me a dream to take off the skirt and put on my jeans and get to teach it. He gave me Levi's. And so I just listen to what he says. Um, people can make up their own rules, but that's what Judaism did. They make up their own rules. Let's just go by the Torah, by the spirit of the law. Um, if he tells you to cover your head, do it. If you don't feel to, do not. Now, I know that I asked him about the makeup. I said, Lord, is that just for me or everybody? He said, everybody. He goes, I want my women pure and holy and not focused on their own vanity. Um, so that one, he said, goes across the board. 
But what he tells me is don't judge some woman if they want to just wear skirts, which I don't judge them. That's great for them. Um, he says, but they also can't judge you. You're not wearing men's clothing. You're not acting like a man. You're doing the job that I've given you to do. And so those are the things where, good night, Erica. Um, yeah, and the only one in the um, Bible who painted her face was Jezebel. <laughs> we don't want to be like Jezebel, do we, Kyra? Um, the Lord instructs us, like, to cover the face and make it because that's what's a big... Yeah, and you're right. That's, that's a good point. Um, he just, I just knew he told me not to do it. Um, and that's okay. I felt more convicted to cover when my hair was short, but when it grew back, now I haven't felt it. And, and, and that can be spiritual signs too. Um, that's cool, Carrie. And honestly, um, I love to help people with their dreams. Usually, like if people, sometimes they'll give me the dreams and, and they'll type it out, but they'll, I know they're forgetting little details. It's honestly, for me, and Danielle can testify to this, she'll, if she writes out a dream, sometimes I'm like, okay, well, there's more. I know there's something here. Once we start talking about it, then I'm like, oh, right away, I'm just getting the interpretation. Like, okay, boom, 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 boom. Um, and that happens a lot. Sometimes if I don't know you well enough, I'm not going to understand what God is speaking in your life, but I can tell you generalities how to pray through it. So if you ever need that, reach out. Uh, I prayed about it for ages. What God said to me was, you cover your head when talking to God. Your head is your husband. I don't go through my husband when talking to God. Okay, and I'm trying to understand. I had two dreams the last week. Wait, yeah, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, God said to me, was you cover your head when talking? I'm sorry, you cover your head when talking to God. Your head is your husband. Um, I'm, I'm a little confused, I think, by the wording on that one, but that's okay. Sometimes if, it's a, I know, texting, we don't always see all the grammar, where the periods are and where the sentence stopped. Um, That's awesome, Dixie. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, you guys feel free. If you if you can't understand your dreams, Yabby, um, for whatever reason, he chose, he usually, I, well, my, he gives me interpretation of dreams a lot, but that's whatever, he chooses to do that or not. Um, sometimes he's going to have you press in and understand. So let's close in prayer. Again, and Father God, we lift up all the people who need their physical healing tonight as we prayed um, earlier. I pray for Marie and Charlene and um, for my cousin Chris. I pray for um, Selena and for Danielle and for uh, everybody on here. There's so many people who, Lord, um, please grant your healing mercies to your people. Please help us to have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to comprehend. Yahweh, will you make us the most humble people, just so humble before you that we would think of nothing but you and your glory. May we never defend our ways. May we never stay, stick to our opinions, but just want your truth. And Father, speak your truth to us. Give us hearts to receive and obey you. Please circumcise the foreskin of our hearts that we would only obey you and walk after you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your teaching lessons. Thank you for your discipline. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your Torah. Thank you for Yeshua. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you that we have our needs met. And we ask that you would be glorified in our life. And will you please protect every single person on here? Please don't let Satan get any of your children. Please don't let any of these people go the way of head knowledge or the wrong way. Please let them sit at your feet and only hear your voice. Father God, please be the shepherd in their life and never let them go astray. Keep them from the false systems. Keep them from the Nicolaitan systems. Keep them from the lies of Satan. Make them your perfect crowns on you, crown on your head. May they all be your beautiful bride. Please, Father, sanctify them, call them, and purify them for your name's sake. And I put myself in there too, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay. Oh, congratulations. Well, Father God, please help Lainey. Please help with the morning sickness, Father God. Um, please calm that as this life is growing in her and please calm her body, strengthen her body, heal her body. And please let this pregnancy be perfectly blessed in your name's sake. Let her let, grant, bless AJ's hands as he delivers the baby. And please let this be a perfectly easy birth 
um, without the pain and just watch over every detail of this and let this baby be a mighty witness for you in this earth, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless your name in the name of Yeshua. Amen. And then I'm going to say, Miss Laney, um, spicy food and high protein. <laughs> That's what helped me when I was morning sick. I was teaching sixth grade. <laughs> and uh, we had had a tornado about my house. So I had to go see my husband who was in Arizona. And yes, we were already married. <laughs> got pregnant <laughs> because of that tornado that wiped out my town and then we didn't have a place to teach right people aren't really thinking about school when you have no town anymore <laughs> it's a huge tornado and so then I get pregnant and I come back and I have to finish the school year in Minnesota and I was so sick and the father led me to this spicy tomato drink one day and I always believed in God, even though I didn't understand Torah. You know, I was just like one of those magic filled Jesus Christians. Anyway, and it, like, I felt my nausea go away. And then I started eating hot wings every meal, twice a day. So lunch and dinner were hot wings. And I didn't have any more morning sickness after that. So if that would help you, I don't know, some people, some people, everybody's different. But I kept my protein really high with hot sauce really good and Arizona peppers makes an amazing hot sauce and my son who's now 25 loves hot sauce um, yeah yeah oh I yeah I just wasn't understanding what I was saying Bridget I was just like I was like oh I was trying to understand it sometimes I wasn't understanding if you were saying you need it if God was telling you to cover your head or not cover your head I know I have been told at specific points to cover my hair so I'm not against it, but it's the people who make it a commandment of God when it's not a commandment of God to do it all the time. Cause Yahweh has told me like, there's times like I don't do it. Um, most of the time I don't, um, but there's times I felt to do it. So yeah, that's all I'm saying is it's not a commandment, but don't judge anybody if they want to do it, but be careful not to become one of those women that are really nasty and mean and catty and they cover their hair. And it's like, Ooh, I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather just be nice and kind and loving and not catty. Like, I don't want to fight. Let's just get along. Good night, Cassandra. Love you. Um, and then, yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. So exciting. Um, yeah, and sometimes God will protect you if the dream's not from him. Um, okay. Okay, I love you all so very much. I'm going to go to bed. I got a newborn session in the morning and, of course, cows and stuff. And so you all have a blessed night. Reach out if you have questions or need help. Um, and we'll try to do tomorrow night, okay? We'll try to go 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time so we can continue on in this book of Acts because I think it's a really good book to get through. If you can't join us live, don't worry about it. It'll be on the video section on my page. And then... I do need to start doing the YouTubes because then I won't go as fast and I'll be more focused as well. It's just like I'm on the podcast. Sometimes on the lives, I'm trying to like go and then I have questions and I get, um, you know, it's, I like the lives. I think it's more personable, but I think some people, I don't know. I don't know why people like video. I like podcasts. I, when I drive, I love podcasts. I listen to podcasts. That's what I like. Um, okay. Good night, good night, good night. Love you all. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Honestly, just know this too. If you disagree with me, I'm still going to love you. Like, just so you know that, I'm not one of those people. Like, we might have things we disagree on, but here's what I always think we should do if we disagree. Let's just pray and ask God to show us his truth. Both be willing to be wrong, but just have, like, yeah, we just want your truth. So, just know that. Because recently somebody, uh, I could tell, yeah, he told me from the beginning there was going to be something in her heart that wasn't right and then so she started um she was arguing not in a mean way she was gracious um but she disagrees on something that i know for a fact yabby's told me about natural medicine that we're not supposed to do it and she thinks it's okay but i know yabby said no um and so just i just want you guys to know like even if we disagree i'm still gonna love you and be there for you and pray for you and want the best for you 
I'm not one of those people who you have to follow me because I don't even want you to follow me. I want you to follow God. My only, like, I don't even get your money, right? I don't have anything to gain from this. I just want you to know God. I want God to have his children. So just remember that. If we do have something we disagree about, let's just be humble enough to, like, at least listen and search through it and just ask him for his truth. Okay, love you all. Many blessings. Okay, 18 ladies coming. Yes. Okay, awesome. I do pray, Father, you help Marie, heal her, strengthen her to share her testimony. Oh, Father God, please save your people, bless them, and let the, all of these people shine your light very boldly where they're at, very loudly. Let, let fish, 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 fish. Bring your people home, Lord. Okay, love you guys. Good night. Have a blessed night.